it's a lovely lovely good evening once again from here and hope that each one of you are absolutely absolutely fine so now coming to the business end in this particular session we are going to start a very formidable chapter as 14 amalgamation of companies now even though the name of the chapter happens to be amalgamation of the company in order to have a complete and comprehensive command over this particular chapter we need to actually acclimatize ourselves with three important terminologies one amalgamation of company and second we will see absorption of company and third external reconstruction these are the three terms which are going to play a very pivotal role in what we will understand in this particular chapter as i uh, as i've already told you it's a pretty strong chapter formidable one and a little bit longer also at the same time now amalgamation of company first of all let us analyze what we mean by amalgamation of companies correct in order to understand the meaning of amalgamation of company let us presume that in the market there are two big companies x limited and y limited x limited and y limited correct for a while you further presume that both these companies are engaged in the same line of trade let us say both these companies are manufacturing computers or laptops or whatever it is that when they are in the same line of the trade so x limited and y limited had decided that why not we should actually merge together and form a one single unit let us say they have decided to merge and form a one single unit by the name of xy limited from the accounting perspective you need to understand that even though x limited and y limited themselves have decided that now we are going to actually combine together and form a one single unit correct they themselves have decided of course it is known as amalgamation of companies amalgamation itself means to combine correct to merge together so x and y limited have merged and they have formed a new company however from the accounting perspective you need to understand that and this is very very important the x y limited will be considered as purchasing company it is it will be known as purchasing company why it will be known as purchasing company i will let you know in a short while so xy limited will be considered as purchasing company however x limited and y limited x limited and y limited both these entities will be considered as vendor company vendor company in accounts we use word vendor for the seller vendor companies now try to understand actually why xy limited is considered as purchasing company and why it will be considered why these two companies will be considered as vendor company the reason being is that under amalgamation of companies which is covered by as 14 quite obviously it also means that while doing the amalgamation of companies concurrently we are going to do accounting standard as 14 too correct now under amalgamation of companies in order to do the accounting we have to break up the scenario into two important parts the selling company known as vendor company or purchasing company into two important segments we have to divide the entire scenario now here we are dealing of this scenario of amalgamation of companies now amalgamation of company put it in simple words means when two or more than two entities combine together to form a new entity that is simply known as amalgamation of company however from the accounting perspective the newly formed company is known as xy limited and it is so because now we will presume that xy limited has taken over the business of x limited and xy limited has taken over the business of y limited in order to do the accounting you will have to analyze the entire situation in this manner because xy limited is taken over taking over business of y limited and business of x limited we can also say that x limited is selling its business to xy limited or y limited is selling its business to xy limited that is why x and y limited will be known as selling companies or vendor companies is it clear to you or not second important point which you need to understand regarding amalgamation of companies is that amalgamation of com amalgamation of companies in practical life generally takes place between between such companies which are generally in the same line of trade as i told you in the beginning itself that both these companies are let us say into same line of trade let us say manufacturing of computers or let us say manufacturing of laptops so in practical life we see that amalgamation generally takes place between big corporates and generally who are engaged in the same line of trade and why generally amalgamation is done 
or amalgamation is adopted by big corporates because it brings about some important mileages and advantages. And the one prominent advantage is that they almost will get a sort of monopoly in the market. Correct? When two big corporates will combine together and join hands and form a one single unit, quite obviously they will be in a better position to control the market. Second, it will also help as you have studied in your economics that it is going to bring them what we call economies of large scale production. We know that when we produce the product, when we produce goods on a large scale, our cost of production will come down. So these are the sort of advantages. So that is the reason in practical life, we often see that corporates merge together. Correct? I hope you got a fair bit of idea now what we mean by amalgamation of companies. So here you write in a little bit along with me. So amalgamation of company, as I told you, generally amalgamation of company simply means, simply means, merging of simply means merging of two or more than two entities two or more than two entities more than two entities more than two entities into a one single unit into a one single unit. So, as we have seen here, X and Y limited, they merged and form a new entity, one single entity that is X, Y limited. Correct? As a movement, as a movement ago, I told you that generally amalgamation takes place between companies or corporates who engage in the same line of trade. So you, if you want to write, you can write that also. Amalgamation generally takes place. Amalgamation. Generally takes place. Generally takes place between or among. Takes place between. or among companies companies engaged in the same line of trade engaged in the same line of trade in the same line of trade In the same line of trade means, as I told you, they are engaged, they are involved in the production of almost similar goods, correct? Further, I told you actually why amalgamation is done, why corporates actually merge together, correct? Amalgamation Amalgamation is resorted to, is resorted to derive, derive following advantages or following mileages, following advantages. So why in practical life actually corporates amalgamate? Because it brings about some advantages as I told you. One advantage, is, the first and prominent advantage is that it will give them a very good control of the market share. That means they will almost acquire a sort of monopoly in the market. Correct? So amalgamation is resorted to derive the following advantages. That is monopoly elements monopoly elements means you understand better than I actually in this particular case that means they will have almost what we call 
uncompetitive share in the market. There will be hardly any rival, correct? Suppresses the competition. Suppress, S-U-P-P, -P, suppress the competition. And this is similar to monopoly elements. Quite obviously, when two big or more than what, or let us say three, four big corporate enterprises are going to join hands, quite obviously, they are going to kill the competition. They are going to suppress and wipe out the competition. Suppresses the competition, isn't it or not? And economies of large scale production. Economies of large scale production. Economies of large scale production, quite obviously, because now they are going to produce on a mass scale and it is going to actually reduce their cost of production. So, economies of large scale of production, large scale of production. large scale of production. So these are some important and chief advantages of amalgamation. And that is the reason why in practical life we see that corporates day in day out are actually merging together. At this particular level you are going to study only the merger that is amalgamation of companies but when you will move into higher levels we'll talk about demergers also so a day in day out we see actually mergers demergers splits off and so many things but here we are dealing up with amalgamation now i hope you got the meaning of amalgamation correct so amalgamation of companies simply means when two or more than two entities combine together and form a new entity this is simple to understand. However, however, from the accounting perspective, how you are going to analyze that is also very important. So newly formed company will be termed as purchasing company, while the existing company who are merging will be considered as selling their businesses, correct? So they are known as liquidating company or vendor company or selling company. Is it clear to you? Now, second important term to get control of this particular chapter Second important term is absorption of company, which you need to understand. What we mean by absorption? Absorption of companies. Absorption of companies. So absorption of companies is also very vital. Absorption of companies. What we mean by absorption of company, try to understand it in this manner. Correct? Let us say there is a very small company. Correct? This is a small company by the name of S Limited. And there is a big company, let us say, by the name of B Limited. For a while, just presume that both these entities are in the same line of trade. Just presume for a while, there is no harm in it. Correct? Let us say both these companies are absolutely in the same line of trade. Now, what is happening, because of its size, the small company's financial strength will be quite obviously lower than this big company, no doubt about that. So, howsoever they may spend on the advertising or to enhance their market share, perhaps they, they may not be as successful because their financial strength is comparatively lower than this big particular, this big particular company. Correct? So sometimes the smaller company thinks that rather than what we call running the show by themselves, it is better to join hands with the big, big company because sometimes a small company may feel that in spite of their best efforts, they won't be able to match their wits against the big company. So that is the reason sooner or later, the small company may feel that we may not be able to compete with the big company and we may, we may lose the race in the in the long run so it is better to get yourself merge into the big company or simply allow the big company to take over you this is known as absorption of company suppose in this case a b company says to s limited why you are running the show unnecessarily because in the long run you won't be able to compete with us so that is better what you do now you simply 
become a part of what we call our structure. In this case, from the accounting perspective, we may say that this big company has taken the taken over what we call S limited and it will be known as absorption. Is it clear to you or not? So absorption in simple words means in practical life when, when, an, when an existing entity, entity of course of higher financial strength will take over another existing company and obviously of lower financial strength then it is known as absorption of companies. Is it clear to you or not? Now in practical life actually, why there is need for absorption? Why big company would like to take over the small company? Why not they, they let the small company to run the show and part of the competition? The reason being is that actually when a big company takes over the small company or whenever an entity takes over, the, uh, takes over another entity actually, indirectly it releases the releases a sound statement of their financial creditability in the market. For example, some time back, when Tata Motors actually absorbed Jaguar of UK, correct? Jaguar, I'm talking about a very big company of UK and very Ill considered as very elite company. So, if Tata has taken over Jaguar, it then very next day there was headlines in the what we call prominent newspapers of the world. So that sent a message in the market that Tata Group is a very strong financially viable group. So whenever an entity takes over or absorbs the other company, that doesn't mean that it is going to bring them profit ultimately. For example, initially when Tata took over Jaguar company, it, Tata actually went into losses in the initial years. But that enhance their financial credit credibility by leaps and bounds. And that is the reason actually why in practical life, day in, day out, we come across what we call such situation where we see actually that companies are absorbing the other companies. As I clear to you, that is what we mean by absorption of companies. So absorption of companies simply means, right in this manner, when an existing company when an existing company, right in bracket, generally of higher financial strength, generally of higher financial strength, higher financial strength. So when an existing company, which happens to be generally of higher financial strength, takes over, takes over, takes over another existing company, right in bracket of lower financial strength of lower financial strength so when an existing company takes over the business of another existing company then it is known as A case of absorption. A case of absorption. So then it becomes a case of absorption. Is it clear to you? I told you why actually entity take over the business of the other entity. Correct? Generally,
absorption. is resorted is resorted to make a sound financial resorted to make a sound a statement of financial creditability financial creditability so it enhances the financial creditability of the company which takes over the business now try to understand this part when a limited took over the business of s limited obviously it will become a case of absorption now in this case s limited will be considered as vendor company while Big Limited, which is taking over the business, will be considered as purchasing company. Is it clear to you or not? Yes, sir. Absolutely clear. Now we come over to next point, known as external reconstruction. External reconstruction. External reconstruction. There is another term, internal reconstruction, but that we are going to study as a separate chapter later on. External reconstruction. What we mean by external re reconstruction? In order to make you understand the concept of external reconstruction, way back, there was a company by the name of Forens. Correct? way back there was a company by the name of Forens, and it used to produce toothpaste and very famous company it was correct i'm talking about 40s and 50s so perhaps your grandfather might be aware of this so there was a company by the name of Forens, as i told you and it was a very popular company very big company and it had a great reputation and remember, remember one thing, at that time there was hardly any other product, there were hardly competitive products also, so it was unchallenging almost in the market. But suddenly in 70-80s, what happened actually, it started incurring losses. It started incurring losses because some new products entered into the market and they started giving a stiff competition to Forens Limited. So what Forens Limited did actually, the Forens Limited liquidated itself. It liquidated itself. It closed down, correct? It liquidated itself, but it re but it re-emerged as a new entity by the name of Binaka Limited. Binaka Limited. So what we mean by external reconstruction? External reconstruction means self-liquidation by a company and self-liquidation by a, an entity and re-emergence as a new entity that is known as external reconstruction that means first we are going to liquidate ourselves and then we are going to re-emerge as a new entity correct so that is known as external reconstruction so forens limited what it did actually let me if you allow me to continue with this particular story so forens limited in as I told you, who was running the show in 40s, 50s, suddenly found a stiff competition in 60s, 70s and started incurring losses. So it thought that better now, perhaps our name is no more bringing us or fetching us enough returns. So better now to liquidate yourself and re-emerged as a new entity. So it re-emerged as a Binaka Limited as a new entity. Now, because the product was really good and within a very quick time it is able to recap the market it is able to what we call recapture the market so binaka limited started ruling the roost almost in 70s and 80s however then suddenly the market changed and there were many many other products in the market again binaka limited decided that enough is enough we are not in a position to bear the losses so again it liquidated itself 
and it re-emerged as a new entity by the name of Sibaka Limited. By the name of Sibaka Limited. However, Sibaka Limited could not sustain the market. Correct? As I told you, now the competition had become very, very what we call uh, a stiff, tough, and it was very hard to survive the market because of the onslaught of several products. Colgate was ruling the roost now, and besides, there were Pestponent and um, many, many new new products. I mean to say, so Sibaka Limited could not capture the lost glory. So ultimately, the directors of this company decided that we should again liquidate, and this time they re-emerged by the name of Forens Limited. Now, if we will go to any medical shop and if we'll ask for foreign toothpaste because it is considered as very good for your gums and generally uh, people of old age prefer this particular product still it is a really really good product without any doubt but it is not having the same sort of market as you know so but now again they as we call it in English again they came back to the square one position so that is what we mean by external reconstruction so external reconstruction simply means simply means self liquidation self liquidation self liquidation by an entity and re-emergence re-emergence as a new entity as a new entity when foreigns decided that it will liquidate and form a new entity account from the accounting perspective we will say that binaka limited is purchasing company and for foreigns limited is winter company and when binaka limited decided to liquidate and form a new entity now binaka limited will become vendor company and sibaka limited will be considered as purchasing company i hope you got the meaning similarly when sibaka limited decided correct to liquidate and form a new company foreign limited now sibaka limited will be considered as vendor company and foreign limited will be considered as purchasing company so these are the important terms first of all which you need to understand as far as this particular chapter is concerned you must have also noticed during this entire what we call discussion that whatever may be the situation whether of amalgamation or, or of absorption or of what we call external reconstruction there is always a purchasing company and there is always a vendor company correct you must have noticed because in amalgamation we saw there were two vendor company and one purchasing company while in other two cases we saw there is a purchasing company and vendor company so in all the three cases we have seen that there is a purchasing company and there is a vendor company quite obviously when when in this particular chapter we will see amalgamation of company whatever may be the scenario whether amalgamation or absorption or external reconstruction we will always notice and we will always see that there is there will be a purchasing company and there will be a vendor company number one if there will be a purchasing company and vendor company quite obviously then our accounting will span only in the in in the in these two sets of books correct in the books of, we will do the accounting in the books of vendor company and we will do the accounting in the books of purchasing company it is as simple as that is it clear to you or not so the next point is that we will now try to understand the accounting aspects as far as uh, this particular uh, uh, chapter is concerned. So, two accounting aspects. Accounting aspects. Just a moment, I told you, as far as accounting aspects are concerned, accounting aspects will run what we call into 
two sets of books. Entire accounting will be done in the two sets of books. What happened? Just, it seems. So as far as accounting aspects are concerned, entire accounting will span into two sets of books. Because whatever may be the case, there will be either a vendor company or a purchasing company. So accounting will be, as I told you, will be done in the books of vendor company and in the books of purchasing company. Correct? In the books of purchasing company. We will see later on that purchasing company is also known as transferee company and vendor company is also known as transferrer company. But these two terms I will use in detail when I will actually make you understand the accounting in the books of purchasing company. Right now you should be actually only bothered about vendor company and purchasing company. These two words are enough to comprehend the what we call accounting aspects. Correct? Since accounting will stretch, as I told you, in the books of vendor company and purchasing company, now we need to acclimatize ourselves how the accounting aspects will unfold when we'll do the accounting in the books of the vendor company. Vendor company is one whose business is now closed. It is also known as liquidating company. Correct? It is also known as selling company. It is also known as vendor company. Correct? So, now here I will write 2.1. Now, 2.1 means this is the section we are analyzing and we are analyzing what we call now accounting aspects in the books of vendor company. So books of vendor company. Books of vendor company. Because the business of vendor company will get closed. Correct? It is as simple as that. Suppose if other company will take over my business, quite obviously my business will be closed and liquidated. So first of all, you need to understand. Do you remember you have done in your earlier phases of education so many times a chapter by the name of dissolution or partnership? Correct? If you remember that particular chapter and if you can recap what you used to do in that particular chapter, it will help you a lot actually in doing the accounting in the books of vendor company. The only difference is that instead of a partnership business, here a company is getting liquidated. A company is getting liquidated, its business is getting closed. Now when the business of an entity in accounts gets closed, as you remember actually, we prepare generally a realization account as you used to prepare in your dissolution of partnership if you remember. Then besides that, you used to prepare the owner's account because in partnership owners were capital. So you used to prepare partner's capital account and the owners of a company are shareholders. So here the vendor company besides preparing the realization account will prepare shareholders account. It is similar to that. Now in your dissolution of partnership, you used to prepare cash account or bank account, whatever it is. So similarly here you are going to prepare cash and bank account. So that means if you can recap as I told you the accounting which you did under dissolution of partnership that will help you a lot in comprehending the accounting in the books of vendor company. To be very honest it is almost similar to that. But let me actually just explain it in detail a way bit. Now as far as books of vendor company are concerned the vendor company is going to actually prepare in fact open not three but four accounts. Correct? So, books of vendor company. Vendor company will open vendor company shall open shall open following accounts. Vendor company shall open following accounts. Now, what are the accounts? That is A realization account as I told you. Vendor company will open a realization account. B. It will open as I told you shareholders account because shareholders are the owners. Shareholders account. Under dissolution of partnership you used to open partners capital account. So instead of partners capital account here we are going to open shareholders account. Now 
Over there, you used to prepare cash or bank account, and similarly, we are going to prepare here cash and bank account. However, one extra account I will prepare over here. That is because under dissolution, our partnership used to get closed. No other entity was purchasing our business, if you remember. However, in this case, the other entity is taking over our business. That means there is some other entity also. So we will have to prepare the other entity account and better known as purchasing company account. So you will, in the books of vendor, besides these three accounts, you are going to open purchasing company account also. Purchasing company account. Purchasing company account. Correct. You are going to open purchasing company account. Now, you presume you are the vendor company, you are the accountant of the vendor company and the business of your entity has closed down and you have opened these accounts. Now, quite obviously, in order to prepare these accounts, you need to know how the accounting will be done. Under the first step, under the first step, what you are going to do, first step. Now, first step deals with closure of asset side. That is closure of asset side. Closure of asset side. So first of all, we need to close our asset side as you used to do in your partnership, dissolution of partnership. Correct? So in order to close the asset side, what we are going to do, we need to understand that. In order to close the asset side, first of all, what I am going to do, I will transfer all the assets to the debit side of realization account. That, that should be my first point, correct? Transfer all assets. all assets to the debit side of to the debit side of what to the debit side of realization account to the debit side of realization account in short i have written r e l realization account all the assets however we need to exercise caution with respect to one asset that is cash and bank. In dissolution of partnership, what you used to do, you used to transfer the balance of cash and bank to the cash account or bank account. Correct? In your dissolution of partnership, in your earlier phases of education, what you used to do? You simply used to transfer the cash and bank balance to the cash or bank account. But here you have to exercise caution. Why I am saying so? If cash and bank balance are being taken over by the other entity, because here, here the new situation is that there is other entity also. If other entity is taking over my cash and bank balance, then if cash bank is taken over t oblique o means taken over taken over taken over by new company it means to say or by purchasing company so if cash or bank is taken over then we are going to transfer it to the debit side of transfer to the debit side of to the debit side of realization account so if cash and bank is taken over by the purchasing entity then in that case i am going to transfer it to realization account however if cash and bank balance is not taken over if not taken over if it is not taken over, because it may be a possibility that purchasing company may not take over our cash and bank balance. So, if not taken over, then we are going to transfer to the cash account.
However, besides cash, whatever assets are there, whether those assets have been taken over or not, whether those assets have been taken over or not, you are going to transfer them to the debit side of realization account. Transfer all asset to the debit side of realization account. I will also write here, irrespective of the fact, irrespective of, irrespective of the fact, whether taken over or not, whether taken over or not. So all other assets, plant, machinery, building, data, stock, inventories, whatever, Correct. All other assets, whether taken over or not, blindly you are going to put them to the debit side of realization account. Correct. So, irrespective of the fact whether taken over or not. However, with respect to cash, you will have to exercise the caution. Now, the point here is that in asset side, there are some assets. Actually, they are not considered as real asset. What asset means? Asset means an account having debit balance and which is capable of fetching us some returns. Correct? In simple language, if I will use the language of accounting framework, then perhaps you may get a little bit confused. Actually, accounting framework says an asset means a resource which is controlled by an enterprise and which is capable of fetching your return. That is what we mean by assets. However, on the asset side, we may come across some items which are not in real terms as assets, correct? They are mere debit balances, but uh, they are not what we call assets. For simplicity's sake, we will call them valueless assets. That means on the asset side, if there will be some valueless asset, there is no legal or legal jargon. It is just for what we call simplicity's sake, I am telling you valueless asset. Now, valueless assets like valueless assets like profit or loss account debit balance, PNL debit balance, like your underwriting commission, preliminary expenses. PE, preliminary expenses, any suspense account, any suspense account. Now, if you come across any such asset towards the asset side, simply consider them as valueless asset. Sim why? Because they are not having any value. In fact, they are not going to fetch you any return. Now you let me being the owner of the business, it is your duty to bear the what we call not only profits but losses also. Correct? If profit belongs to you, then losses also belongs to you. So generally the purchasing company will not take over our valueless assets. Valueless assets will never be taken over. So that is the reason all the valueless assets, whatever are there, will be transferred. So all these valueless assets shall be transferred to the debit side of the shareholders account. Transferred to the debit side, to the debit side of shareholders account. In short, I have written SH account, shareholders account. Why we are going to transfer them? Because it is the duty of the shareholder to bear the losses. So besides valueless assets and cash, all the assets will be transferred whether taken over or not. All the assets, plant, machinery, building, correct, furniture, fixtures, similarly daters, bills receivable, similarly patent, goodwill, trademark, all the assets will be transferred to the debit side of realization account, whether taken over or not. However, just one item will require a little bit of caution, that is cash. Is it clear to you? So regarding cash, you have to be a little bit careful. If it is taken over, you are going to transfer it to the debit side of realization account. And if it is not taken over, then you are not going to transfer it to the debit side of realization account. Then you will transfer it to the debit side of cash bank account. So our first step will be to close the, what we call our asset side. Now, 
we will move over to the next step that is second step closer of liability side closer of liability side closer of liability side As far as liability side is concerned, correct? As far as liability side is concerned, let me tell you, entire liability side can be divided into some important headings, correct? Entire liability can be divided into some important headings. Let us say, in the liability side, obviously, because we are dealing with liability side, but in the liability side, every item is not a liability, as we know. So, in the liability side, if there are liability, what we mean by liability? First of all, you need to understand this. What we mean by liabilities? First of all, you need to understand that in business, there are three parties. Always in accounts, there are always, whenever you do the accounting, you need to understand this particular fact that, or this particular mantra, as I would call it, you need to actually understand that there are always three parties. The first party is considered as business. First party is business. Second party is owner. These two parties are also known as internal parties, correct? Internal parties. And all the other parties other than business and the owners are known as third parties. All supplier, creators, daters, customers, clients, correct? All these are third party. So first of all, you need to understand that in business, there are actually three types of part, three types of parties. Broadly speaking, there are two types of parties, internal parties or outside parties. So whatever amount is due by your business to the third, to the third parties, correct? Whatever amount which we owe to the third parties is in real, in real terms known as liability. Is it clear to you or not? So now I will make you understand that all the liabilities, whatever liabilities are there, all the liabilities will be transferred to the credit side, transferred to the credit side, to the credit side, to the credit side of realization account, to the credit side of realization account. Is it clear to you to the credit side of realization account whether taken over or not? Whether taken over or not? So, all the third party liability as we call, because liability itself means amount due to the third parties. So, whatever amount is due to the third party, that is known as liability and all the liability will be transferred to the credit side of realization account whether taken over or not. Now what are actually our liabilities and mostly you are well aware of all this there is no point in writing all these things but still I will write it for you for example sundry creditors. In your notes I have written the full forms correct bills payable. These are liabilities, sundry creditors, bills payable, outstanding expenses. All these are our liabilities. So, sundry creditor, bills payable, outstanding expenses, provision for tax. Of course, debentures, if there is any. Workmen profit sharing fund, you need to be workmen. This is interesting item. Workmen profit sharing fund, it is liability. Workmen profit sharing fund, it is considered as liability. It is not a fund. 
वर्क बैंक सेविंग बैंक अकाउंट बिकॉज दीज टू लाइबिलिटी कंफ्यूज ए लॉट वर्क मैन सेविंग बैंक अकाउंट सेविंग बैंक अकाउंट करेक्ट आई हैव गिवन यू ए बिट ऑफ लिस्ट सो ऑल ऑल द लाइबिलिटी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट इज दैट ऑल द लाइबिलिटी यू आर गोइंग टू ट्रांसफर टू द क्रेडिट साइड ऑफ रियलाइजेशन अकाउंट वेदर टेकन ओवर और नॉट नाउ बिसाइड्स लाइबिलिटी जस्ट वेट now besides liability there will be some reserves towards the liability side there will be some reserves towards the liability side now reserves can also be categorized into reserves can also be categorized into just pay attention here as far as reserves are concerned obviously reserves are not liability number 1 however reserves can be categorized into three parts as i told you one that is specific reserves specific reserves now what we mean by specific reserves what we mean by specific reserves correct name itself is telling you that specific reserves are those reserves which are specifically particularly created for a particular purpose in fact all the specific reserves are nothing but provisions all the provisions which you make in accounts are nothing but specific reserves because they are created for some specific purpose for example provision for doubtful debts provision for doubtful debts for example provision for depreciation provision for depreciation similarly stock reserve so if you come across such items in the balance sheet these will be considered as specific reserves and all these specific reserves are also transferred to the credit side transfer to the credit side of realization account transfer to the credit side of the realization account credit side of realization account you are going to transfer it to the credit side of realization account remember one thing is it clear to you or not you are going to transfer them to the credit side of realization account however remember one thing purchasing company can take over only assets which are in real sense assets correct and liabilities only purchasing company will never ever take over your reserves but you need to understand that a specific reserve will be transferred to the credit side of realization account besides the specific reserves we may come across other type of reserves are known as pre reserves pre reserves and all the free reserves correct all the free reserves like now you may ask me so please provide a list of free reserves like general reserve like profit and loss account correct like security premium if there is any in the balance sheet similarly capital reserve so whatever type of reserves i have made a exhaustive list in your notes correct so all the free reserves will be transferred to the credit side transferred to the credit side of shareholders account to the credit side of shareholders account credit side of shareholders account correct why because these are sort of accumulated profits so it will be posted to the credit side of the shareholders account correct and secondly 
sorry, as far as reserves are concerned, the third category is statutory reserves. What are statutory reserves? Statutory reserves, name itself is telling. Statutory means compulsory. There are some entity that operate in what we call some notified zones, like free trade zones, correct? So, such entities are pressurized by the law or compelled by the government that you have to create some reserves known as statutory reserves. So, statutory reserves are created under some foundation, under some compulsion, under some statutory guidelines. As far as statutory reserves are concerned, one is known as export profit surplus. Export profit surplus. Export profit surplus. Investment allowance reserve. Investment allowance reserves. Investment allowance reserve. Then development rebate reserve if you want to write. Development rebate reserve. Development rebate reserve. Correct? Now what is the accounting treatment? The accounting treatment is similar to the one which I just told you. You will transfer to the credit side of shareholders account, credit side of shareholders account, correct? So as far as reserves are concerned, so you are very well aware of the treatment now, a specific reserve will be transferred to the credit side of realization account, but free reserves and statutory reserve will be transferred to the credit side of equity shareholder account or simply shareholders account I have written. Now, besides liability and reserves, towards the liability side, what we come across, correct? We come across share capital only, nothing else. So, Next item is share capital. As far as share capital is concerned, I need not require to tell you what will be the treatment. The share capital will be transferred to the credit side of shareholder account. You will simply take it to the credit side of shareholders account. This is how you are going to close the asset and liability side. Once your asset and liability side is closed, then under the third step, what you are going to do? The third step deals with purchase consideration. What we mean by purchase consideration? What we mean by purchase consideration? When other entity will take over your business, quite obviously other entity is going to give you some amount to purchase your business. Correct? You are not going to sell your business free of cost. You are going to charge something from the purchasing company. The amount which you are going to receive against the sale of your business is known as purchase consideration. Or the amount which will be paid by the purchasing company to the vendor company, that is known as purchase consideration for taking over the business. So, purchase consideration, you are the vendor company, you are going to receive the purchase consideration. But first of all, you will have to pass an entry like this, purchasing company account debit, purchasing company account debit, purchasing company account debit to realization account. To realization account. You will pass this entry <coughs> on the date when agreement takes place, when everything is clear, when purchasing company commits that we are going to purchase your business. 
purchasing company will immediately not what we call discharge the purchase consideration. First of all, agreement will take place. So on the date of agreement, when you are sure that you are going to receive the amount from the purchasing company, even though you haven't received the amount, but you are sure that now you are supposed to receive some amount from the purchasing company, you are going to debit the purchasing company account because now you will consider them as your data and it is a gain to you because you are going to receive some amount, you are going to credit the realization account. After some time, you will receive the amount of purchase consideration. When you are going to receive the purchase consideration, because other entity is a company, Correct? Other entity is a company and the company is taking, taking your company. So, because other entity happens to be a, a company form of business, so it may discharge the consideration either by paying cash or by paying some or by issuing some shares. That means the purchase consideration can be discharged by purchasing company by way of cash or by through or through what we call issuance of the shares or even debentures. So, Purchasing company will give you some amount, whatever amount and in whatever manner you receive, you are going to debit it. For example, let us say some portion you are receiving in cash. You are going to simply debit cash account. Let us say some portion of the purchase consideration you are receiving by way of shares. So you are going to write here shares in purchasing company account. Shares in purchasing company account. You are going to debit shares in purchasing company account. Correct? So, and let us say you are receiving some debentures. You can debit the debentures in purchasing company account. So, in whatever form you are going to receive the payment, you simply debit it. And because you are receiving these payments from the purchasing company, obviously you are going to credit the purchasing company. So, you will write purchasing company. So, in this manner, the purchasing company account will get closed and whatever amount you have received in the form of cash, you are going to take it to the debit side of the cash and besides cash, whatever you have received, you are simply going to take it to the debit side of shareholders account that I will explain when I am going to take the what we call practical portion. Then after the purchase consideration, the next step is, next step is now assets not taken over assets not taken over but sold as i told you all the assets will be transferred to the credit side of realization account whether taken over or not that means all the assets have already been transferred to the credit side of realization account now, if some of those assets might, might not have been taken over, obviously vendor company will try to sell those assets. So, if there is any asset which is not taken over but sold, in that case, you are going to write an entry, cash account debit to realization account. Cash account debit to realization account. So, if there is any asset which hasn't been taken over but sold out, in that case, entry will be like this cash account debit to realization account and similarly there may be a liability which might not have been taken over so liability is not taken over liability not taken over but i have already told you all the liability whether taken over or not are posted to the credit side of realization account so, all the liability you must have posted to the credit side of realization account already. Now, out of those liability, if any particular liability is not taken over, then it is the duty of the vendor company to pay off that particular liability. Because if that liability is not taken over, then it is the duty of the vendor company. Correct? Now, it is your duty because you are doing the accounting in the books of vendor company. You are the accountant of vendor company. So, it is your duty to pay off that particular liability. So, your entry will be realization account debit to cash account. Realization account debit to cash account. This is how you are going to pass this entry. Correct? And then, last point is with respect to liquidation expenses. Liquidation expenses.
Correct? Now your business is closed. In order to close the business, some legal things have to be met. Some various other expenses may have to be incurred. So that means some expenses take place. It is also known as cost of liquidation. Now it is important, if liquidation expenses are borne by vendor company, that means your company, your company is getting closed. If liquidation expenses are borne, are borne by vendor company, vendor company, So in that case, you are going to pass a very simple entry, realization account, debit to cash account. Very simple, realization account, debit to cash account, correct? This is the entry which you are going to pass. If liquidation expenses are borne by vendor company. However, sometime purchasing company agree to bear the uh, liquidation expenses. So, if liquidation expenses are borne by purchasing company, are borne by purchasing company, are borne by purchasing company, then we are not going to pass any entry. Vendor company will not pass any entry. In this case, entry will be passed in the books of purchasing company. Entry will be passed will be passed in the books of purchasing company in the books of purchasing company is it clear to you now obviously the purchasing company will pass the entry expenses account debit to cash account So importantly, if expenses are borne by purchasing company, then vendor company is not going to pass any entry. If vendor company himself or rather itself will bear the expenses, then only it will pass the entry and entry is very simple. After this, you will have to, all you have to do is close your realization account. Close realization account. You will close your realization account. Remember one thing, the purchasing company account must have already closed. Correct? The moment you are going to receive the purchase consideration, the purchasing company account will automatically get closed. So in the last step, first of all, you will close the realization account. Whatever profit or loss is there, you are going to transfer it to equity shareholder account. And then you are going to close your shareholders account or equity shareholders account, whatever it is. And then finally, cash, before that, actually, I told equity shareholder account, just let me see, let me, after the realization account, what you do, actually, you prepare cash account and close it. Now, whatever balance in cash account is there, whatever balance in cash account is there, that balance will be posted to the shareholders account. I have already told you whatever result of realization account will be there, you post it to the shareholder account. Similarly, then you close cash account, whatever balance is there, you post it to shareholders account. And finally, your shareholder account will automatically get closed. If it automatically gets closed, that means whatever you have done, that is absolutely correct. And there is no room for any mistake. So this is how the accounting will be done. Is it clear to you? So first of all, we have to actually close the asset side, then liability side. We should be very well versed with all these terms, liability, reserves. And you need to understand that reserves are of three types, specific, free reserve and statutory reserves. Correct? So what will be their uh, postings so that you need to take into account? So once you, once you are become thorough with it, then it will become almost like a walk in the park correct to solve the question obviously in the next session you will realize that it, how easy it is so obviously for this particular session it is enough and in the next session we'll meet you and obviously over there we are going to do some practical and then this point will become much more clearer to you 
Hello, it's a pretty lovely good evening once again from here in Delhi and hope as always that each one of you are absolutely, absolutely fine, happy and of course in fine spirits. So, in the very first session we have had a lot of discussion with respect to what we call amalgamation of companies where upon actually we discussed upon three terms. That is amalgamation of companies, external reconstruction besides that absorption of companies too. So after acclimatizing ourselves with these three core terms, uh, uh, terms of this particular chapter, we also have had a little bit of discussion with respect to the accounting aspects in the books of the vendor company. Now before leaving the what we call class, I also told you that in the upcoming one, we are going to supplement the discussion. <clears throat> we are going to supplement the discussion with some practical. So here we are and we are going to pick up of section one. <clears throat> so if you have the notes, then kindly actually pull them out and go through section one in fact in section one first question i'm not doing in fact i'm going to do and start with 1.2 so here we go and start today's this particular session the following is the balance sheet of a stop limited now stop limited's balance sheet is given and later on we are going to see that this is the vendor company and this company is being taken over by some other company in fact the name of other company is stock limited so when we will go through the balance sheet, the equity and liability, the first item is shareholders fund whereupon we find share capital. Now try to recapitulate the accounting. For example, vendor you will have to do the accounting in the books of the vendor company. And in the last session, we talked about what we call closer of liability side and closer of asset side. So obviously you are going to close first of all your liability side and we try to remember and recapitulate, as I said, where you are supposed to post the share capital. Share capital you are supposed to post to the credit side of share capital account, that is shareholders account, sorry. Then besides that reserve and surplus, in the reserve and surplus, although I talked about four types four type of reserves, uh, in fact three type of reserves. Free reserves we talked about, these are free reserves, profit and loss account and general reserve. Of course, these items will also be posted to the credit side of the shareholders account, if you remember. Right? Besides that, there could be what we call a statutory reserve. Even statutory reserve, right, like what we call export profit surplus, investment allowance reserve, development rebate reserve. If such items would have been present over here, I, too, I still would have posted them to the credit side of uh, shareholders account. However, Besides that, there are specific reserves also. In fact, specific reserves are provisions. And provisions are not posted to the credit side of shareholders account. In fact, all the specific reserve, that is provision, will be posted to the credit side of realization account. Correct? Now, besides that, whenever you are going to go through the question, it is very important to note down the liabilities. In fact, in this question, there is one liability in the form of 12% debentures. And besides that, there are creditors. Only two liabilities, although I have written bills payable, just to acquaint you that what other item could be there under the current liability. However, in this question, there are only two items, 12% debentures and creditors. So these are the two items of the liability. So you have to go through the balance sheet very carefully when you start what we call doing the accounting in the books of the vendor company. Now, Coming over to the asset side, as you know, asset sides are divided into two parts. One is non-current asset, another one is current assets. Under the non-current assets, we have in this case property, plant and equipment, whereupon we are having tangible fixed asset in the form of land and building. P lakh and plant and machinery, 6,70,000. In this question, there is intangible asset also in the form of goodwill. But you will treat the goodwill patent, copyright, trademarks, like normal items, correct? However, under non-current asset, there is another heading that is other non-current asset, whereupon generally we put nowadays all the valueless items like preliminary expense, discount on issue of share, underwriting commission. If you remember, we have had a lot of discussion with respect to preliminary expense, underwriting commission, discount on issue of shares. These are valueless assets. And I talk about this particular fact that purchasing company can will never ever take the value less asset. Purchasing company will take over only assets having some value and liabilities. Correct? So value less assets will be posted to the debits debit side of shareholders account. Correct? And Besides that, under current asset, we have four headings, but there is no current investment in this question. However, we have inventories, that is stock, trade receivable data, and bank balance. Correct? So, now we move over to the other part of the question. 
Further, the question states that Start Limited took over the business of Stop Limited, as I told you in the beginning itself. So, in this particular question, first of all, ask coolly of yourself which company is taking over the other company. Start Limited is the purchasing company. Start Limited is taking over Stop Limited. So, Stop Limited is the vendor company. So, right now, our focus area is Stop Limited. We have to do the accounting in the books of Stop Limited. And when you go through the question, it is very important to note down that are there any assets which are not being taken over and likewise are there any liabilities which are not being taken over for example in this particular case start limited took over the business of stop limited and in the bracket it is written accepting cash at bank that means in this particular question cash at bank is not taken over if you remember the rules correct which we uh, talked about in the last session when while what we call closing down the asset side, I talked about this particular fact that asset side can be broadly divided into two parts, valueless assets and assets having the value. Valueless assets will never ever be taken over by the purchasing company. Valueless assets will be posted to the debit side of shareholders account. Now, as far as assets are concerned, assets are also segregated into two parts, cash and all other assets. All other assets, barring cash, barring cash and bank all the other assets will be posted to the debit side of realization account irrespective of the fact whether such assets have been taken over or not correct that means barring cash regarding other assets having value we need not require to care about whether those assets are being taken over or not you are going to post them to the debit side of the realization account this is fact correct now we, as far as cash is concerned, if you remember, I wrote a special note. Here you will have to exercise great amount of caution and care. If cash and bank are being taken over, you will post them to the realization account. However, if cash and bank are not being taken over, then you are going to simply put them in the cash and bank account. That means you are not going to put them in the realization account. So in this question, cash at bank is not being taken over. So you are going to take the cash at bank or simply bank account in this case to the cash bank account. Similarly, there are two liabilities. Out of those two liabilities, 12% debentures are not being taken over. But if you remember the rule regarding the liability, I, I all wrote and I also talked about this particular fact that all the liabilities will have to be posted to the credit side of realization account whether being taken over or not. However, if a particular liability is not taken over, after posting them to the credit side of realization account, it is your bounded duty to pay them off. That means you will have to pay the 12% debentures later on. Now, the, if you will go through the entire sentence, it goes like this. Start Limited took over the business of Stop Limited, accepting cash at bank and 12% debenture for rupees 16,80,000. Now, what is this 16,80,000? Could you tell me? This is your purchase consideration. This is the amount which the purchasing company is going to pay to the vendor company. That means in this particular question, purchase consideration is given. Correct? Section 1 deals... With, uh, here I have kept two questions only. That means in, the, in these questions we will find that purchase consideration is given. However, when we will move, we, we'll move the discussion further, we will find that most of the time actually we are not having the purchase consideration. In that case, we shall have to find it out. However, in this particular case, purchase consideration is given. And it is very important for you to note down the purchase consideration somewhere when you go through the question that is 16,80,000. So 16,80,000 is your amount of purchase consideration which is given in the question. Now the second thing which you note, which you need to note is that in what form purchase consideration will be delivered by the purchasing company. In this question it is stated that out of 16,80,000 payable as 15 lakh in the form of 1 lakh equity shares of rupees 10 each at a premium of 5 per share. Question states that as far as payment is concerned, the purchasing company will pay to the vendor company 16,80,000. But in order to pay 16,80,000, purchasing company will pay 15 lakh by way of equity shares. That means purchasing company will pay partially out of what we call total purchase consideration of 16,80,000, 15,80,000 by way of equity share. And for the same, purchasing company will issue 1 lakh shares of rupees 10 each but at the rate of 15 it is written equity share is 10 each and each share is being issued at a premium of 5 that means at the rate of 15 so 1 lakh into 15 is equal to 15 lakh now question says and balance in cash balance that means what is the balance amount 
out of 1680 we have received 15 lakh by way of equity share so quite obviously your balance amount will be equal to 1 lakh 80 thousand and this balance amount you are going to receive in cash so you have noted it down very carefully it is very important to note down the amount of purchase consideration this should be your first task correct after noting down the amount of purchase consideration you have also noted down the mode of payment that means in what form you are going to receive the amount of purchase consideration now here it is also mentioned that stop limited which is the vendor company vendor company is one who which is being taken over or whose business is getting liquidated because this company is will now will be taken over by the purchasing company so no more stop limited will be there in practical life so stop limited redeemed its debenture at a premium of 10 percent i have already told about told you that 12 percent debentures haven't been taken over so it is the duty of this vendor company to pay them off so when vendor company will pay them it will pay them uh, at 10 percent premium correct so first of all the amount of debenture will post to the credit side of the realization account and later on we are going to pay them also for example the amount of debenture in this particular case if you will have a look in the question that is equal to 1 lakh 50 thousand that means you will have to later on pay them at 10 percent premium that means 1 lakh 50 thousand plus 10 percent that is equal to 1 lakh 65 thousand so purchasing sorry vendor company will pay them off at 1,65,000. However, if this particular line would not have been mentioned at all, even in that case, you would have had paid the debenture, but in that case, you would have given them a payment of rupees 1,50,000. Is it clear to you or not? Now, further, it is also mentioned in the question that liquidation expenses amounted to rupees 10,000. Now, liquidation expenses are 10,000 but borne by start limited. Do you remember? I talked about this particular fact that if liquidation expenses are borne by purchasing company, you are not going to pass any entry. Rather, purchasing company will pass the entry in its books. So, in this case, vendor company is not going to pass any entry with respect to what we call this because this is the first question. So, obviously, I will do this question. Let me have a close look once again over the question. Equity share capital 10 lakh. Then profit and loss account and general reserve 30 and 370 and we have two liabilities 150 debenture creditors 210 uh, these are the item land and building 3 lakh plant and machinery 670 goodwill and preliminary expense and three more items stock traders and bank balance. So now I will do this question for you however question is given you given to you in a solved manner but still I would love you to as far as possible note down the question correct. Now, if you remember in the last session, we talked about this particular fact that in the books of the vendor company, we shall have to do the accounting. So, books of vendor company, first of all, I would write in this particular question, books of vendor company. Books of vendor company. In the books of vendor company, we will prepare four accounts, if you remember. Correct? Vendor company is actually your stop limited, S-T-O-P, stop limited. You can, name the, you can write the name of the company also. Now, first of all, you will have to draw out the account, realization account, number one. I think this much is enough, realization account, I will prepare it. Should be enough. And then, besides the realization account, I am preparing purchasing company account. Correct. However, after this, I will prepare purchasing company first and then realization account. But just to make you understand better, I'm going this way. Then we will prepare also equity share cash account and equity share holder account. Equity share holder account. So these are the accounts which we are supposed to prepare. Equity shareholder account. Your work should be absolutely neat and tidy. And besides that, besides the equity shareholder, we are supposed to prepare cash bank account. Cash bank account must be closed before you close the equity shareholder account. And purchasing company account must be closed. Purchasing company. This account will be closed first of all and then we are going to close the realization account correct this should be the order of closer of the accounts but first we have to prepare all these accounts now if you remember i talked about these steps 
correct the first step is closure of asset side or in fact you can close your liability side it is entirely your decision let us say we start with what we call closure of asset side as you can see and we talked about this particular fact that all the assets which are really assets correct that means all the assets except the valueless assets will be posted to the debit side of realization account whether those are being taken over or not but we will have to take a bit of care with respect to cash at back so first item is land and building and land and building i will write here three lakh because posting is done from the balance sheet while preparing the realization account only the book values that mean values which are given to you in the balance sheet will find place over here plant and machinery you are going to post plant and machinery also when we will post plant and machinery to the debit side of realization account now plant and machinery account will get closed now next item in this particular case was goodwill so don't forget to write goodwill also treat the goodwill in a normal manner goodwill patent copyrights all items will find place over here next item is preliminary expenses preliminary expenses amount is equal to 10000 so preliminary expenses will be written towards the debit side of the shareholders account that is 10000 rupees then after the preliminary expenses we have three more item one is stock the stock will be posted to the debit side of realization account that is equal to 450000 very easy not tough at all and then debtors debtors will also find place towards the debit side of realization account all these are assets in this question all these assets are actually taken over and even though if they would not have been taken over i still would have posted them over here correct now regarding cash we have to exercise caution as i said and i have been repeating it so many times now point here is that if bank would have been taken over i would have written it in the Uh, on the debit side of realization account however in this question clearly it is mentioned that cash at bank is not taken over because it is not being taken over so it is my duty to put them in the what we call cash bank account i will write here balance brought down simply that is 30000 correct so balance brought down will be written only if the if cash and bank is not taken over so that we round your asset side is closed now we move over to the liability side in the liability side we find equity share capital general reserve and profit and loss account all these three item will be posted to the what we call credit side of equity shareholders account is it clear to you or not so towards the credit side of the equity shareholder account i write don't write balance brought down simply write equity share capital why you should not write balance brought down because your entry to close the equity share capital is equity share capital account debit to shareholders account is it clear to you or not so that's the reason actually we shall write it over here and the amount will be equal to 2 lakh and similarly we have profit and loss account in this particular case profit and loss account is uh, profit and sorry equity share capital balance uh, i think is 10 lakh actually i have written 10 lakhs the uh, 2 lakh sorry it is 10 lakhs so i will write here 10 lakh instead of 2 lakh some actually 2 lakh is the balance in the first questions because generally questions are memorized to me honestly speaking but anyway so profit and loss account is the next item profit and loss account is a free reserve it will come over here and similarly general reserve the general reserve is 3 lakh 70000 besides that we are having two liabilities in this particular question we have already gone through the question all the liabilities will be posted to the credit side of realization account whether taken over or not whether taken over or not correct 12% debenture account is actually not taken over but still i am going to post it to the credit side when i will post it to the credit side the debenture account will close 150000 similarly the next item will bills paid well, sorry creditors in this particular case and the amount of creditors is 2 lakh 10000 so this way round you have closed your assets and liabilities now if you remember what i talked about what we call after the closure under the third step i talked about this particular fact that now you will have to take into account purchase consideration in order to treat the purchase consideration in rough you write actually one entry like this purchasing company account debit to realization account first of all we pass this entry this entry means actually as per the agreement now we are supposed to receive purchase consideration of 16 lakh 80000 which is given in the question so purchasing company is our debtor company that is why we are going to debit them we haven't yet received 
because first of all in practical life agreement will take place and only after some time you will receive the amount so that is why first of all we pass the due entry and then afterwards we will receive the amount and we have credited realization account because when we are going to receive the amount of purchase consideration it is a sort of what we could gain to us so that is why we are going to put it to the uh, credit side of realization it's a gain now we are going to receive the mode of payment you are receiving the mode of payments partially in cash and partially by way of share so your entry will be like this cash account debit you have received out of 16 lakh 80 thousand 1 lakh 80 thousand in cash and besides that you have also received equity shares you will have to write in this manner equity shares in purchasing company or start limited whatever you may like to write purchasing company that is 15 lakh worth of equity shares you have received to purchasing company you are receiving the mode of payment from the purchasing company therefore you are going to actually credit purchasing company account 16 lakh 80 thousand will be your amount is it clear to you or not now all we have to do is to post this these two entries now i will post the first entry when i will post the first entry this entry is affecting two accounts purchasing company account and realization account because realization account is getting credited i will write towards the credit side of the realization account by purchasing company and purchasing company is getting debited so towards the debit side of the purchasing company i am going to write realization account that is exactly what i am going to do here so towards the credit side of the realization account i would write actually here purchasing company account in the bracket if you wish you can write purchase consideration due 16 lakh 80 thousand this is the amount of purchase consideration which you will have to put it over here and then you will cross it to the debit side of the purchasing company as i told you in the entry purchasing company account is getting debited you are going to write here to realization account that is equal to 16 lakh 80 thousand once you are done up with this now you will move over to the second entry now second entry deals with the receipt of purchase consideration you have received cash and you have received equity share and purchasing company account is getting credited so first of all i will write towards the credit side of the purchasing company by cash because we are receiving from purchasing company one lakh eighty thousand worth of cash and besides that we are receiving equity shares from the purchasing company so i will write equity shares in purchasing company account and that is equal to equity share in purchasing company account is equal to 15 lakh after having received the amount now we are going to close this i told you the moment you are going to receive the amount from the purchasing company automatically purchasing company account would get closed now towards the credit side of the purchasing company you have written cash and we are preparing cash account also obviously the cash account will now be posted to the debit side of cash account here we are going to write to purchasing company is it clear to you that is equal to one lakh eighty thousand and then we are receiving equity share in purchasing company account so we can write it towards the debit side now try to understand one very important aspect whatever payment you are receiving from the purchasing company actually that payment is meant for the owners of the vendor company ultimately the payment will be received by the owners of the who are the owners of the company owners of the company are shareholder so logically entire 16 lakh 80 thousand should be posted to the debit side of shareholders account because shareholder are the owner of the vendor company logically entire amount of payment should be posted but point is that we are preparing cash account also that is the reason portion received in cash will be posted to the debit side of cash account and later on we will see that whatever balance will be there in the cash account we will post it to the equity shareholder account and besides cash in whatever form you are going to receive the payment please try, pay attention besides cash in whatever form debentures equity share preference shares bonds in whatever form you are going to receive the payment all those payment will be posted to the debit side of equity shareholder account so here i am going to write to purchasing company equity shares in purchasing company or simply purchasing company you can write in bracket equity shares correct and the amount which you have received is equal to 15 lakh so this is how the entire treatment will be done with respect to purchase consideration simple now just one point you have to keep in your mind only one point after having done up with closer of asset side number one number two closer of liability site number three after having 
completed the entire what we call scenario with respect to purchase consideration only one question you have you need to ask yourself is there any liability which hasn't been taken over in the question yes there is one liability to venture so if there is any liability then you are supposed to you means the vendor company is supposed to pay them off so on the debit side of the realization account i am going to write what to cash now we will pay to the debenture holder now pay attention our entry is realization account debit to cash account to pay the debenture we are paying to the debenture actually the amount of debenture as i told you is 1 lakh 50000 but in the question it is specifically given that these debentures are being paid off at 10% premium so i will write 10% premium also that is 15000 and i will make a payment of 1 lakh 65000 is it clear to you or not yes sir so payment of 1 lakh 65000 has been made now important point is that the moment you have written here cash it should strike to you that you are also preparing cash account so you need to cross it to the credit side of cash account also so you are going to write here by realization that is 1 lakh 65000 is it clear to you or not yes sir absolutely now now only thing left is that we have to balance this particular account See, you must balance it by yourself. It is very important to develop this habit of what we call with the calculator or with anything. You need to balance it because most of the things are memorized to me, so I am straight away writing the answer. But it is your bounded duty to calculate the net profit or loss. In this question, we will see that there is a profit. I think it was one lakh fifty-five thousand. Because our credit side is higher, so one lakh fifty-five thousand is the profit. If you remember, actually. I told I told you that whatever profits are there or in fact losses are there will be posted to the shareholders account. So that is why here I am going to write profit transferred, profit transferred to shareholders account, profit transferred to shareholders account. Correct. This is the balancing figure. Obviously, now purchasing company account is stand closed. Realization account has been closed. It's correct. And now <clears throat> we will close the cash account also. but first let me write this amount of profit to the credit side of shareholders account here i am going to write by realization profit that is 1 lakh 55000 1 55000 55, now we are going to balance our cash account now whatever balance will be there in the cash account 1 2 lakh 10000 minus 1 lakh 65000 so i think the balance is equal to 45000 so whatever balance is there in the cash account that belongs to shareholders the owners so that is the reason you are going to transfer this balance to the shareholders account is it clear to you since you have written towards the credit side of the cash account 45000 obviously now you are going to cross it to the debit side of equity shareholders account whereupon you are going to write to cash 45 now if you remember i also told about this particular fact that once you have once you have done up with the entire accounting procedural aspects correct then this account must get automatically tallied if i am going to tally this particular account i will be left up with 15 lakh 55000 and i will tally this one also so i am getting 15 lakh 55000 so this will be a sort of verification that whatever you have done is it done have done in a, in a in a correct manner is it clear to you or not yes sir now generally we are supposed to pass entries in the books of purchasing company also correct books of purchasing company we are supposed to pass the entries we are supposed to pass the entries and in the upcoming questions later on we will see that we are also supposed to prepare the balance sheet also <laughs> books of purchasing company now as far as books of purchasing company are concerned as far as accounting in the books of purchasing company is concerned books of purchasing company it is very important for you to understand that we will not do blindly the accounting in the books of purchasing company first of all we need to acquaint ourselves with what we call as 40 so books of purchasing company accounting aspects in the books of purchasing company are basically dealt by as 40 as 40 does not deal with the accounting aspects in the books of the vendor company 
in the books of vendor company you will do the accounting with the same rules which we have already seen and which we just saw is it clear to you or not so as far as books of purchasing company are concerned i have already told you accounting aspects of in the books of purchasing company are dealt by as 14 so as far as accounting aspects accounting aspects are concerned <laughs> accounting aspects of course, in the books of purchasing company are concerned, that is dealt by, as I told you, AS-14. So that means if somebody asks you, does AS-14 applies to vendor company's books, your answer should be straight, no. Is it clear to you or not? Because it deals with only books of purchasing company. Now, AS-14 states that before starting the accounting, in the books of the purchasing company, we need to segregate the case or rather we have to find out whether it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger or whether it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase. That is the reason why I told you that we cannot straight away start the accounting in the books of purchasing company. First of all, I will have to find out as per AS 14, whether it is a case of whether, whether it is a case of whether it is a case of case of amalgamation amalgamation in the nature of in the nature of in the nature of pay attention here whether it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase or merger. That means before starting the accounting aspects in the books of purchasing company, the standard AS 14 states that first of all, you, we have to figure it out whether the present case is a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger or amalgamation in the nature of purchase. This is the crux of AS14, correct? Whether it is a case of in the nature amalgamation in the nature of merger, amalgamation in the nature of merger, or whether it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase, we have to figure it out. That is what AS14 is traits. So how will you figure it out whether it is a case of merger or whether it is a case of purchase? We will ask three questions to ask ourselves in order to figure it out whether it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger or whether it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase. What we are supposed to do, we are supposed to ask ourselves following questions. Whether it is a case of merger, so I will raise some question to myself. The question number one is, question number one is, are all the assets, are all the assets are all the assets and liabilities are all the assets and liabilities are being taken over are being taken over this will be my first question to myself being taken over correct if answer to this question is let us say yes then only i will have to raise the second question to myself if answer to this question is yes, suppose if answer to this question is no, then you need not require to check out further because then automatically it will become a case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase. Why? Because we will see that AS 14 states that all these questions must have answers in affirmative. All the questions which I am going to put before you. All these questions must have answers in affirmative, then only it will be a it will be a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger. Is it clear to you or not? If any one question is not in affirmative, that means automatically the case will be categorized as amalgamation in the nature of purchase. Is it clear to you? Because AS 14 has defined only amalgamation in the nature of merger. It hasn't defined purchase. The question simply states regarding purchase is that if any of the conditions, correct, 
the conditions actually I am putting up in question form. If any of these conditions gets violated, then obviously case will become amalgamation, case will be of amalgamation in the nature of purchase. So are the following assets and liabilities being taken over? This should be first question. If the answer is affirmative, I will move to second question. Second question I will raise to myself are such liabilities, are such assets and liabilities, are such assets and liabilities are being, are being taken over at book values. Let us say for a while, just presume for a while, let us say, now forget about this question, let us say there is there is a particular case, one company is taking over the other, other company and all the assets and liabilities are being taken over. Let us say first condition is satisfied. Second condition, are all the assets and liabilities are being taken over at book value. Let us say this condition is also satisfied. Then, third condition. Third condition. Third condition is, is payment is payment given is payment given to equity shareholders given to equity shareholders equity shareholders obviously the payment will be given by the purchasing company and the payment will be given to the what we call owners of the vendor company. So my the owners can be equity shareholders and preference shareholders also. So whatever payment purchasing company is giving to the shareholders, its payment given to equity shareholder is, is by way of equity shares, by way of equity share, by way of equity shares. That means purchasing company has given some payment, let us say, to the equity shareholders. And payment is being given in the form of, let us say, equity shares only. Correct? By way of equity shares only. By way of equity shares only. If all these, these questions are having answers in affirmative, in that case, it will be called as amalgamation in the nature of merger. Now we, we will use these rules, let us say, to categorize the present case, correct? Now in the present case, now you tell me, are all the assets and liabilities being taken over or not? The answer is no, because liability, that is debentures, are not being taken over. Is it clear to you? So obviously I need not require to go through next uh, series of questions. So that is the reason this particular case will, be, will become a case of purchase. So, what is a purchase? What is the case of purchase? If all the question, in fact, if any of the, if any of the question, if any of the question, if any of the question has answer in negative, Because all these three questions must have answers in affirmative. If any of the question is having answer in negative, then it will be a case of purchase. We will see that most of the time the case will be of purchase. Very rarely we will come across case of merger. Is it clear to you or not? So first of all, now you have determined that it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase. So what entry you are going to pass under, under this particular case? Correct? So... I gave you a bit of idea that before we start the entry, we must categorize the case actually, whether it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger or whether it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase. Is it clear to you or not? See here, in this case, now I am going to pass the entries in the books of vendor company, uh, purchasing company, books of purchasing company, books of purchasing company. In the books of purchasing company, 
correct first of all i will mention case amalgamation in the nature of purchase because this is a case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase so i will do the entry accordingly in the nature of purchase in the nature of purchase correct so books of purchasing company and it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase what will be my entry my first entry will be now you presume as if you are the chief accountant of what we call acquirer company that is purchasing company correct now you are purchasing the business of some other company so your entry will be business purchase account debit business purchase account debit to liquidator of vendor company we write liquidator liquidator of vendor company why we write liquidator because in practical life when a particular company gets liquidated for example a stop limited is being taken over by the start limited so stop limited is closed it is wound up now so a liquidator will be appointed and now liquidator will take charge of that particular company that mean in practical life the dealings will be between the purchasing company and the liquidator of the vendor company so what does this particular entry signifies this entry signifies that we have purchased a business of the vendor company for rupees 16 lakh 80 thousand and we are supposed to pay 16 lakh 80 thousand to the liquidator of vendor company is it clear to you so this is just a sort of what we call corresponding entry to the entry which we write earlier purchasing company account debit isn't it or not to realization account so on the date of agreement actually this entry is written now you have purchased a business obviously you would like to know that once you have purchased the business quite obviously you would be interested in knowing that which are the items which you have taken over correct so you will have to go through the question in this particular case once again and we will look into the question and uh, uh, do you remember all the what we call figures okay because i remember you need to, i need to require to show you the question just have a look over here itself we have taken over plant and machinery all the assets i am going to write here plant and machinery plant and machinery account debit now in this question plant and machinery is 6 lakh 70 thousand written in the books However, when purchasing company will pass the entry in its books, if revised value would have been given in the question, if revised values would have been given in the question, I would have written revised value. That means we have to write the value at which we are taking over the assets. Because in this question, revised values are not given. So that means all the assets have been taken over at same value. Besides that, we are also having land and building in this particular question. So land and building also we are taking over at rupees 3 lakh. Is it clear to you or not? At rupees 3 lakh. Then we have in this case a stock. See, we cannot take preliminary expenses. So a stock account debit is equal to 4 lakh 50 thousand. So 4 lakh 50 I am going to write. 4 lakh 50 thousand. Besides that, I am having daters. Daters 2 lakh 50. No revised values are given. Daters are 2 lakh 50 thousand and remember one thing we haven't taken over we haven't taken over bank correct and preliminary expense we cannot take so we will never write preliminary expense only such assets and such assets I am going to put here which we have taken is it clear to you suppose if I total them up what will be my total let us say let us say just to make you understand better 670 plus 300 plus 450 plus 250 that comes to 1670 this is rough 16 lakh 70 thousand correct now i will also write the liabilities i have taken over in this question we haven't taken over deventure we have taken over only creditors and amount of creditor was 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 equal to 2 lakh 10 thousand if i am not wrong 2 lakh 10 thousand now just presume very for a while you are the purchasing entity and you have recorded that these are the assets which you have taken over and you have recorded that you are these are the liability which you have taken over now suppose if i subtract 2 lakh 10 thousand from 16 lakh 70 thousand 
let us say if I subtract 2 lakh 10,000 from 16 lakh 70,000, oh, 1670 minus 2,10, that comes to 1460, 1460, actually I am sorry there is one more item was also there, goodwill, I will write goodwill also, goodwill account also we took over at 50,000, goodwill is 50,000, correct? So, this will be equal to just add me, just just wait 1670 plus 50, 1720. That means all these assets which we have taken over is equal to 1720. Total is correct, and this total is 210,000 or 210. If I am going to subtract from the assets this liability, what figure I am going to get less 210 that is equal to 1510. From 17 lakh 20,000, if I am going to subtract 2 lakh 10,000, I am going to have 15 lakh 10,000. 15 lakh 10,000 worth of net assets. So, instead of writing all these items, you could have simply written net assets account debit 15 lakh 70,000. Is it clear to you? But, but you have to write in this manner only. Entry is not over yet. Remember one thing. Just allow me a second because I have to. <laughs> and now I will rub it out. So this is the entry, but entry is not yet over. So all the assets and liabilities which you have taken over, you will first of all note them, note them here, and then you are going to write to business purchase account. Now, sir, why we are writing business purchase? The most of you have a habit of simply learning the things that this is the entry and we have to write this. You need to understand the logic. To business purchase, when I am writing here business purchase and the amount of business purchase is 16,80,000. I told you by subtracting 2,10,000 from the total of the asset side, our net assets is equal to 15,10,000 correct and when I am writing here to business purchase that means I am comparing the amount which I have paid to acquire these assets that is why we do this particular entry that means when I am acquiring somebody see this is a normal tendency when we go to the market when we buy what we call some groceries etc we try to compare whether we got the same value against the amount which we paid or not or whether we incurred losses or earned a sort of what we call profit so similar is the situation with respect to taking over a particular company so here that mean i'm comparing the net assets with the amount which i have paid now suddenly i will feel that i have paid more amount 16 lakh 80 and i got assets worth rupees 15 lakh 10000 only net assets 15 lakh 10000 only is it clear to you when you are paying more amount and getting less the difference will be equal to what is the difference now 15 lakh 10 minus 16 80 the difference is equal to 1 lakh 70000 this difference when amount of business purchase will be more than the amount of net assets, the difference which is known as capital, difference is known as goodwill. Because you have paid more amount. Remember one thing, you are the payer. Now many among us again get confused when we say the difference will be goodwill. Goodwill is a capital loss. First of all, you need to understand goodwill is a capital loss for the party which is paying the amount of goodwill. Obviously, it is a sort of gain to the party which is going to actually have the goodwill. But when other party will record, other party will record actually as a capital reserve. But here in this particular case, purchasing company, purchasing company I am talking about, purchasing company is preparing the accounts. They have paid more amount. So it will be treated as goodwill. The difference will be treated as goodwill actually because what goodwill is already written over here. So I will simply write here goodwill on absorption. This is your balancing figure, goodwill on absorption. That is equal to 1,70,000. This is your balancing figure. Remember one thing. This is your balancing figure. So, basically your second entry will start from here. Is it clear to you? I hope now you got the logic of the sec second entry. That is very important to understand the logic. Correct? Now, I hope it is clear to you that why we are writing here business purchase because we want to compare the net assets 
with the amount which we have paid to acquire the business and whether we have earned uh, we have uh, earned a sort of profit or we incurred a loss in this case we have incurred a sort of loss that loss would be debited to goodwill however if there would have been any gain i would have had credited it to capital reserve balancing figure correct now next thing is that you have you haven't still paid to the liquidator so liquidator must be paid so now we will pay to the liquidator this should be your third entry liquidator account debit liquidator of vendor company account debit you are supposed to pay to the liquidators how much 16 lakh 80 thousand so you are going to write here 16 lakh 80 thousand and how much you are going to pay them you are going to pay them two cash that is equal to one lakh eighty thousand because this much of payment you have done by way of cash however for the balance in fact balance you paid by way of cash and you issued equity share worth rupees 15 lakh but remember now you are the purchasing company when you will issue the equity share capital you will write the entry in this manner equity share capital account debit how many shares you are issuing one lakh share and what is the face value of the share the face value of the share is 10 that means purchasing company when it will do the accounting in its books it will mention the what we call amount face value amount that is 10 lakh and then security premium amount will be mentioned separately because these equity shares have been issued at the rate of 15 so security premium will be 1 lakh into 5 1 lakh into 5 that is equal to how much that is equal to 5 lakh so this is how the purchasing company is going to pass the entry is it clear to you now in this question expenses have been borne by purchasing company so first of all purchasing company will pass an entry expenses account debit to bank account expenses account debit to bank account that is equal to i think expenses amount were 10000 i think so okay whatever is the amount you write here expenses account debit to bank account now this these are the expenses related to the vendor company because vendor company was supposed to bear these expenses but we bore these expenses correct so it is again a sort of loss and accounting standard as 14 states please pay attention as 14 states that if it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase if it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase all the losses from the perspective of the purchasing company will be debited to goodwill account you are not going to debit them to profit and loss account so these expense will be debited to goodwill account is it clear to you because you are going to treat it as a capital loss i will not debit it to profit and loss account that is why i will write next entry goodwill account debit to expense account now this is to make you understand actually i wrote in this manner from next time I will simply pass that straight entry goodwill account debit to bank account because expense expense will get cancelled. So you could have still written straight away written goodwill account debit to bank account. Correct. Now this is in this question we will have to pass these entries. So what is the difference if this particular case would have been amount would have been let us say if this particular case would have been a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger let us say actually this is not a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger remember one thing i'm simply trying to tell you correct what would have been the situation what would have been the situation for that just you will have to wait for a while because i have to do lots of effort to make you understand but you hardly appreciate those efforts the problem is this so how can you say so because i'm not having lots of comments from student fraternity that's the problem uh, anyway suppose suppose correct this is not related to the question this is just suppose suppose 
it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger amalgamation in the nature of merger in the nature of merger had it been a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger it cannot be a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger just presuming for a while then what entry would have i would have had passed the first entry would have been seen so there is not much difference to be very honest with you there is not much difference so first entry you will write in the same manner as you have been writing so far mm -hmm. what happened business purchase account debit to liquidator account you would have written same entry although you can write in bracket merger business purchase instead of business purchase you can write business merger also but it is better to write business purchase only to liquidator of vendor account you would have written this same entry i am not writing the figures intentionally because this question is not of amalgamation in the nature of merger now my second entry would have been please pay attention all assets taken over all the assets all assets taken over because under amalgamation in the nature of merger purchasing company will take over all the assets all assets but assets i am talking about i am not talking talking about valueless asset all the assets so i would have written all the assets taken over then i would have written two liabilities taken over all the liabilities taken over correct then here very interest very very interesting point here i would have not only written two liabilities but here i would have written also all the reserves all the reserves whatever reserves vendor company is having i would have written them also so does it mean purchasing company under amalgamation in the nature of merger will take over all the reserves of vendor company no no i have told you it is a fundamental truth whether it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger or purchase purchasing company because when you will pass the entry in the books of vendor company first of all as14 will not apply correct use uh, this particular segregation deals uh, is uh, related only to the purchasing company's books in the vendor company books you will prepare the accounting in usual manner now coming over to this particular point i have already told you it's a fundamental truth that purchasing company can take over only assets and liability it can never ever take the reserves of the vendor company because when vendor company will prepare the account correct we have already seen that all the reserves we are going to post to the credit side of the shareholders account so, so shareholders account and reserves will automatically get closed over there itself we cannot take them over point you need to understand is that under as14 why then as14 gives this format that under amalgamation in the nature of merger you will write all the assets to liability and all the reserves here you need to understand that actually we are not taking over the reserves in case of merger actually many among us not only in a student fraternity but many among us are under a, a very uh, in a state of very unclear unclarity in the sense that we tell to the student that purchasing company will take over the reserves purchasing company will never ever take the reserve but still we will have to write the reserve all the reserve it means purchasing company will create the reserves similar to the reserves which are having in the books of the purchasing company for example in this particular company if you will look into the uh, what we call balance sheet of the vendor company do you remember there was profit and loss account balance and there was general reserve balance 
Suppose if it would have been a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger, I would have written profit and loss account, I would have written general reserve here also besides the liability. But that doesn't mean that I am taking over their general reserve or their profit and loss account. It means purchasing company will create what we call from its own resources, what we call amounts amount of reserves similar to the one which are appearing in the books of the purchasing company. That is the main thing. That means here purchasing company is not taking over. Purchasing company is simply preserving the entity, correct? And for that purchasing company will have to create the reserve from their own resources. From their own resources, that is very important. So all the reserves also you will have to write here. This is the big difference in the second entry, correct? Obviously all assets and liability you will have to write at a book value only because if there is revised value then question cannot be of amalgamation in the nature of merger. Question in, will, be, will be of amalgamation in the nature of merger only when all the assets and liabilities are being taken over and these are being taken over at book value. Correct? Now the main point, the main difference, one difference is this, we have already seen. Then we are going to write here to business purchase as usual. Because we are going to compare the things. Now, let us say difference is coming as we saw when the difference was there, we wrote goodwill. Now, under amalgamation in the nature of merger, if difference will be there, let us say towards this side, then I am going to write it profit and loss account or general reserve. It is my discretion, my choice. So, that means AS14 states that if it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger, all the losses or gains will be debited or credited to profit and loss account. For example, if balancing figure would have been over here, then still I would have written profit or loss account or general reserve. That means losses and gains under amalgamation in the nature of merger are treated as of or of revenue nature, while gains or losses under amalgamation in the nature of purchase are treated as of capital nature. Is it clear to you? That is the big difference. Then you will pass the same entry. Third entry payment to liquidator will be the same entry. Payment to liquidator, you will pay the amount to the liquidator, liquidator of vendor company in the same manner. Liquidator of vendor company to bank account. To bank account correct and then if purchasing company would have borne expenses and case would have been of merger your entry first of all you will write expenses account debit to bank account similar to the one which I wrote earlier however in the preceding case I mean to say in the case of purchase I debited this expense amount to goodwill account while under amalgamation in the nature of merger these expenses will be debited to profit and loss account or even to general reserve account if you wish so so i hope now you have got the difference so when we will do the accounting in the books of purchasing company we must categorize the case into amalgamation in the nature of purchase or amalgamation in the nature of merger and accordingly, we are going to pass the entries. The basic difference is that AS14 states, if it is a case of merger, all the assets and liabilities will be taken over, taken over at book value. The difference will be debited or credited to profit and loss account. That means the losses will be treated as revenue sort of loss. Similar is the case with respect to expenses. Expenses will be debited to profit and loss account. That means I could have written only one entry, profit and loss account debit to bank account. So, these are the things which you need to be aware of while you do the what we call accounting in the books of purchasing company. With that, we come to the end of this particular session. We will continue with the next one in the upcoming one. Correct? So, we will have a great uh, discussion uh, in the upcoming session. And at the same time, there is one question. Question number 1.1, you need to do it by yourself, which you can very, very easily manage. Correct? So, shall meet you in the next session. So welcome again to this particular session. So in the last one, we have had a, a lengthy discussion, not only with the with respect to what we call accounting aspects in the books of vendor company, but also we saw how the accounting is done in the books of purchasing company. Now in this particular section, 
again we are coming up to vendor companies folks but this time we will see that unlike the last question whereupon we have had the uh, what we call luxury or purchase consideration given to us but here purchase consideration is not given to us we will see later on that when purchase consideration is not given when purchase consideration is not given when purchase consideration is not given so whenever purchase consideration will not be given in that case obviously you will have to compute the purchase consideration correct we will see that as far as computation of purchase consideration is concerned there are three methods by which we can compute purchase consideration correct there are three methods of computation of purchase consideration one is known as net assets method net assets method correct another one we will see later on is known as intrinsic value of shares method don't worry about the full form when we will uh, discuss this method we will uh, discuss it in detail later on and then there is third method also known as net payment method there are three methods of computation of purchase consideration as I told you net assets method, intrinsic value method and net payment method. So if purchase consideration is not given by applying any of these method you can compute the amount of purchase consideration but here you have to exercise caution in the sense that it is not your choice, it is not your prerogative, it is not your discretion that whatever you may feel you can use the method and what we call accordingly compute the what we purchase consideration. So when purchase consideration is not given, we will have to go through the question and we will have to figure it out that out of these three methods, which method we are supposed to apply. Obviously, first I am going to discuss net assets method and I will also let you know that why we have to pick up net assets method. Correct? So let's have a look over this particular question now coming over to section 2 and this is the question 2.1 examination problem also here it is given that balance sheet of reckless limited balance sheet of reckless limited the name itself is very strong balance sheet of reckless limited is given to you in this particular question and question says that balance sheet of reckless limited as on 31st of March 2023 is as follows correct and here you have been given share capital 60,000 shares of 10 each that is 6 lakh and then we have been given what we call profit prior to incorporation, contingency reserve and profit and loss account. Besides that we have been given here non-current liability as far as liabilities are given in this particular question, there is no non-current liability. I have simply written debentures. Actually, there is only one liability that is creditor and then acceptances and then provision for tax. There are three liability in this particular question. Is it clear to you? Three liabilities. Besides that, it is also given to you in this particular question that your tangible freehold premises is equal to 2,20,000. Under the non-current asset, first of all, we write property, plant and equipment. Under the property, plant and equipment, we also write tangible and intangible. So, freehold premises is 2,20,000. Machinery is 1,77,000. Furniture and fittings is equal to 90,800. Then, as far as your current assets are concerned over their inventory, that is stock. And then, trade receivable, that is bills receivable, 15,000. Dators are given to you in this manner. Gross amount is 80,000, less provision for doubtful debts 4,000 and net amount is 76,000 and similarly cash and cash equivalent that is cash in hand is 2,300, cash at bank is this much and total cash is equal to 1,58,800. Now what else is given in the question? Now here it is stated that Careful Limited decided to take over Reckless Limited from 31st of March 2023. So Careful Limited is taking over the Reckless Limited, correct, with the following assets. At value noted against the, at value noted against them. That means it is given in the question that purchasing company is taking over bills receivable, freehold premises, furniture and fittings, machinery and stock. So, if we will look into the balance sheet, we find that purchasing company is taking over bills receivable, 
bills receivable 15000 are being taken over freehold premises is also being taken over furniture and fittings are also being taken over machinery is also being taken over and stock is also being taken over now you must have noted very carefully that uh, in this list the amount of data is not included so logically it means purchasing company is not taking over data in this particular case number 1 and number two purchasing companies also not taking over your cash at bank are you getting my point and you must have noted this so in this list these are the item but these two items are not taken over now important point is that even though datas are not being taken over still you are going to post them to the credit side of realization account because i have already told you so many times i, I and i need not require to harp upon the same string time and again that Uh, if any asset is not taken over, still you are going to post them to the debit side of realization account. Only thing is that with respect to cash only, we have to think whether taken over or not, because we have to take care of cash in hand only. So in this particular question, we will see that cash in hand and cash at bank are not taken over. So that is the reason we will post them to cash bank account. However, datas will be still be posted to the. debit side of realization account however because now datas are not being taken over so we are going to realize them later on we will realize them and we will receive some amount and then we will pass the entry cash account debit to realization account for that correct now further it is given in the question one fourth of the consideration now we will see that in this particular question purchase consideration is not given because question starts in this manner one fourth of the consideration now what is the amount of consideration we do not know at this particular moment but question says that whatever your purchase consideration is there one fourth of same one fourth of the consideration one fourth of the consideration whatever your consideration is there one fourth of that will be satisfied by allotment of fully paid preference shares of 100 each at par which carry 13% dividend on cumulative basis indirectly it means out of total purchase consideration one fourth will be settled by way of preference share that is and it will carry 13% dividend means 13% preference share capital will be issued and one preference share will be issued at the rate of 100 <coughs> so one fourth of the purchase consideration will be settled by way of preference share capital <clears throat> now pay attention this is a trillion dollar line the balance now you may say sir why what is trillion dollar in it because even in the earlier question there was written word balance but in earlier question we were given the amount of purchase consideration here the amount of purchase consideration is not given and question states states the balance was paid so try to understand if purchase consideration is not given and question states that balance was paid in so and so manner then you will have to apply net assets method to determine the amount of purchase consideration is it clear to you so how, when net assets method will be used number 1 when purchase consideration is not given and number 2 question states that balance will be given in so and so manner so in this question it is written that balance will be paid in the form of purchasing company careful limiteds equity shares of 10 each eight paid up that mean purchasing company will pay the balance amount the balance amount will be 3/4 and this balance amount will be paid by way of equity shares for that purchasing company will issue equity shares having a face value of 10 each but eight paid up but eight paid up so this is how you are going to receive the amount of purchase consideration and you are not having the purchase consideration now pay attention again further question says that datas realized 79500 datas realized 79500 <clears throat> i told you in this question datas haven't been taken over because datas haven't been taken over so obviously you are going to realize them and your entry will be cash account debit to realization account for an amount will be 79500 now the question talks about liabilities acceptances were settled for rupees 19000 because it is given that acceptances that is acceptances means bills payable you have settled them at 19000 that mean acceptances are not taken over correct and 
question further says that income tax authorities fix the taxation liability at rupees 11 lakh a uh, 1 lakh 11600 so that means provision for tax you have made worth rupees 1 lakh 10000 but income tax authority are are of the opinion that your tax liability is 1 lakh 11600 so we need to pay what we call 1 lakh 11600 so even this liability will be paid off by vendor company automatically it means these liabilities are not being taken over and interesting point very interesting point creditors were finally settled so creditors were also paid off settled means we have paid them so that means in this particular question purchasing company is taking over all the assets barring debtors and cash at bank but none of the liability not a single liability has been taken over in this particular case why because all these liability will be paid off even creditors will be paid off by how much creditors will be paid off question says that creditors are finally paid with the cash remaining after meeting the liquidation expenses amounting to 4000 what does it means it means we will prepare the cash account correct in the cash account obviously i will write the opening balance as cash is not taken over in the books of vendor company i'm talking about i will write the opening balance we have realized the debtors also it will also have however we paid some liabilities point here is that whatever balance will be there in the cash account whatever balance will be there in the cash account that balance will be paid to creditors creditors were finally settled with the cash remaining with the cash remaining after liquidation expenses that mean after meeting the liquidation expenses whatever cash balance is there that balance will be used in paying the creditors that is the point in this particular question is it clear to you or not also it means that liquidation expenses are borne by vendor company see if the question is silent if nothing is mentioned in the question who is bearing the expenses always presume that vendor company is bearing the expenses so in this question vendor company is bearing the expenses interesting question very interesting question let's have a look over this and it's a tough question although question has been given in a solved manner but still i would love you to actually go try to write along with me correct so in this question we have to learn two three things this is section two question number one section two question number one now we are picking up section two correct and under section two we are picking up question number two point one obviously because in the question purchase consideration is not given first of all i will have to find out the amount of purchase consideration this should be your first step so calculation of purchase consideration calculation of purchase consideration now the next point is that how i am going to compute that means whether i am going to use net assets method net payment method or intrinsic value method so I told you in this particular question amount is not given but word balance is written. So that is why I will have to use what we call net assets method. Correct. So through net assets method I am going to find out the amount of purchase con consideration. Net assets method. In order to find out purchase consideration under net assets method, all we are supposed to do is A. First of all, I will simply write assets taken over. Assets taken over. T oblique O means taken over. Assets taken over at revised value if any. At revised value. At revised value if any. It means now you will note only such assets which have been taken over for computing purchase consideration under net assets method. There are only two steps. One, first you will have to find out which are the assets which the purchasing company has taken over. And if the revised values are given, you will note down the revised values. Correct? Otherwise the book values. 
And similarly, then I will take into account the liabilities taken over. That's a different matter in this particular question. None of the liability has been taken over. That's a different matter. But the point is this. So first of all, in this particular question, I will note down all the assets which have been taken over. Correct? So below it was written that bills receivable have been taken over. So first of all, I will write bills receivable. And below it is given that bills receivable have been taken over at 15,000. Correct? Further, you are also given that freehold premises. Freehold premises. As far as freehold premises is concerned, freehold premises. What is the amount of freehold premises? Freehold premises is 4 lakh. Taken over at 4 lakh. Revised value. Furniture and fitting, F oblique F in short form, I am writing, that is 80,000. So, at 80,000, actually, furniture and fittings have been taken over. Then, machinery, I would write, as far as machinery is concerned, you must have noticed that machinery was taken over at 1,60,000. At 1,60,000. Then, stock was taken over at 3,45,000. 3,45,000. Stock was taken over at 3,45,000. These are the assets which have been taken over in this particular question. Is it clear to you or not? Right. So, once you have determined the amount, now the next thing is that, so asset taken over at so and so, first of all, I will total them up. What is the total? The total will be equal to, total will be equal to 15,000 plus 4 lakh plus 80,000 plus 1 lakh 60,000 plus 3 lakh 45,000. Total according to my calculation is 10 lakh. Then under the second step, I am going to subtract liabilities taken over. Liabilities. So, if purchasing company in this particular question would have taken any liability, I would have written over here. However, in this particular question, none of the liability has been taken over. Correct? So, in order to compute purchase consideration from net assets method, you must have noticed that it's pretty easy. All we have to do is to note down the asset taken over and their value at which those assets have been taken over. Likewise, liability is taken over and in case the revised values are given, we shall consider them. So, that means the total purchase consideration here is equal to 10 lakh. Now, once we have determined the amount of purchase consideration, the next step is to know the amount of mode of payment. Correct? So, purchase consideration, then step number 2. What is the mode of payment? That is, manner in which I am going to receive the amount of purchase consideration. So, mode of payment. It was clearly mentioned in the question that one-fourth of the payment is being received by way of equity shares. Correct? So, I will simply note down one-fourth of this particular item. Now, one-fourth will be equal to one-fourth of 10 lakh. Obviously, it will be equal to 10 lakh. 2 lakh 50,000. And this payment we are receiving in which form? In which form we are receiving this payment? That is through 13% preference share capital. So, purchasing company is offering 13% preference share capital at par. And one share is of 100 each. Indirectly, it also means that purchasing company will issue 2,500. Because if I am going to divide rupees 2,50,000 by 100, I will get 2,500 shares at the rate of 100. Although it is not needed. Needed is only this much that purchasing company will pay this amount by what we call issuing preference share. And three-fourth balance of the payment, balance is three-fourth. So, three-fourth of 10 lakh, that is equal to 7,50,000. So, 7,50,000 I would receive. In fact, I means vendor company. Vendor company will receive this particular amount by way of equity shares. However, in this particular case, it is given that purchasing company will offer equity share Having a face value of 10, 8 paid up, 8 paid up. Now, what we mean by 8 paid up? Suppose I want to know the number of share, how many number of share purchasing company is offering us. So, how will I find? 
in order to find out the number of shares, simply write the amount 7,50,000 and divide it by 8, that is the paid up value. So you will get number of shares which the purchasing company will offer you 7,50,000 divided by 8, that comes to 93,750 shares. That means purchasing company will issue 93,750 shares of rupees 10 each, sorry of rupees 10 each of rupees 10 each 8 paid up 8 paid up that means purchasing company can call rupees 2 per share on these shares which they are going to issue to the shareholders of what we call uh, vendor company obviously now the vendor company's owner will become the shareholders of the purchasing company and purchasing company from them in future can call what we call two rupees because these shares are being issued eight paid up is it clear to you or not in fact this is one of the demand of the question to determine the number of equity share we have determined it now the next step is of course books of vendor company so now in the books of vendor company third step books of Vendor company, vendor company is reckless limited. So vendor company will prepare one real purchasing company account. Now I am preparing purchasing company account first. Correct. It is not necessary that you have to prepare purchasing company account first or something like this. This is as per your own feasibility. And then we are going to prepare cash bank account and finally shareholders account. Correct shareholders account. This is your shareholders account. And besides the shareholders account, we shall prepare cash bank account. And then we are going to prepare realization and purchasing company account purchasing company is careful limited and realization account so once we are done up with all these formations now we can proceed so first of all we will in the we will look into the balance sheet of this particular question and in the balance sheet we are given that share capital is 6 lakhs so we can now start closing item wise so share capital as we know will be posted to the credit side of shareholders account so here i would write simply 6 lakh <clears throat> then in this particular question <clears throat> we have been given profit prior to incorporation as far as reserve and surplus are concerned See, all these reserves which are given to you, profit prior to incorporation, contingency reserve and profit and loss account, all these are considered as free reserve because now this, com this particular company has got liquidated. So, profit prior to incorporation, profit prior to incorporation, amount of profit prior to incorporation is 21,000. Besides that, we have been given in this particular question, contingency reserve. So, you will also write contingency reserve. Amount of contingency reserve given in the question is 1,35,000. And then we have been given profit or loss account. Profit or loss account will also find place over here, 1,26,000. 1,26,000. Besides that, in this question, there are three liabilities, although none of the liability has been taken over. But so many times I have told you, as far as liabilities are concerned, whether taken over or not, whether taken over or not, you are going to post them to the credit side of realization account. For example, in this particular case, creditors, 1,13,000. Besides creditors, we are also having in this particular question acceptances. So, acceptances I would write, acceptances, that is equal to 20,000. And then we have got provision for tax. So, these are the three liability 
and none of the liability has been taken over. But in spite of that, we have posted them over here. Only thing is that we have to keep in our mind that we have to pay them later on. We should not forget it. <laughs> so as far as your liability side is concerned, things are over. Now we move to close the asset side. When we will close the asset side, sometimes a student fraternity ask a question actually. So should we write here book values or the revised value? Because in this question, book values are also given. I will tell you a very simple rule. Whenever you are going to do something within the account, for example, realization account, always use the book figures. And whenever you are going to do something out of accounts, always use the revised value. It is as simple as that. And moreover, we are simply closing the balance right now and we are looking into the balance sheet. So whatever figures in the balance sheets are given, you will have to take that. That is one way of understanding it. That is 2 lakh 20,000. And then in this question, machinery. Machinery is 1 lakh 77,000. Then we have bills receivable. So I would write here bills receivable. Bills receivable is 15,000. We have in this case daters also. I think I haven't written one item. Machinery, furniture and fittings is also there. I have kept a question sheet with me also, correct? I would like you to keep the question in front of you so that in case if I forget some amount, I can look into the what we call question sheet. Generally questions are memorized to me, but still. So, furniture and fitting is also there. So, furniture and fittings is 90,800. And then we have in this case, uh, a stock amount. Furniture and fitting, then we have a stock. Amount of stock is pretty high, 387,400. Then we have daters. Remember one thing in this particular question, daters weren't were taken over. Daters were not taken over. In fact, now when you will close daters, you can take the net amount. This is one way of closing the daters. Correct? 76,000. Or you can simply write here 80,000. And then you need to write provision for doubtful debts towards the opposite side. So I have simply taken the net figure. Then we have been given cash in hand and cash at bank. So I will simply because cash and bank balances were not taken over so i will write them in the cash bank account and their total is 158800 so as far as balance sheet is concerned correct we have closed a town now so now we can move over to the other aspect now what is the other aspect the other aspect is that once you are done up with the closer of liability and assets then purchase consideration will be taken into account we have already seen now what are the entries which we are supposed to pass? Simply visualize those entries in your mind. You need not require to write them. So your first entry will be purchasing company account debit to realization account. Obviously, you are going to move to the credit side of the realization account. Purchasing company account, you will write. It is better to write in bracket purchase consideration due. And we computed the purchase consideration that was, I think, 10 lakh. Correct? Amount of purchase consideration was 10 lakh. So cross it over to the debit side of realization account, uh, the purchasing company account and write here to realization account. That is 10 lakh. Now you are going to actually receive the payment from the purchasing company. We have seen that as far as 10 lakh is concerned, this time nothing is being received by us in cash. Rather purchasing company is issuing 13% preference share capital worth rupees 2 lakh 50 thousand because one fourth of payment was by way of preference share while we are also receiving equity share capital 13 percent preference share capital in purchasing company we have to mention this similarly equity shares in purchasing company equity share in purchasing company worth rupees 7 lakh 50 thousand we are receiving in this particular question is it clear to you now I will close it because this account will get automatically closed. Now, just a moment ago, I told you, as far as purchase, receipt of purchase consideration is concerned, if some portion is received in cash, obviously that portion will be posted to the cash account. But I also told you very specifically, anything and apart from cash will be posted directly to the what we call shareholder account. So in this case, 
even though you are receiving preference shares that will be posted to the debit side of preference shareholder account 13 percent preference shares correct that is equal to 250000 and likewise you are going to write here equity shares in purchasing company okay i will simply write equity shares 750000 you got my point or not now in this question you have to be careful regarding one aspect because in this question daters were not taken over so you need to realize the daters provided it is given in the question so in the question it was given somewhere that daters were realized i think 76000 was the amount uh, 79500 so daters have realized 79500 so i will write here because our entry will be cash account debit to realization account i will write here by cash realization from daters realization from daters so you have received 79,500 from daters. You will write here by cash. Now, image, you need to instantly post it to the debit side of cash account to realization. Daters, 79,500. 79,500. Is it clear to you or not? Yes, sir, absolutely. Likewise, in this question, the major part of this question is this one. Now we have to pay to the liabilities. We have to pay all the liability. I will write here to cash. Correct. It is clearly given in the question that acceptances, acceptances were paid 19,000. So I will write here realization account debit to cash 19,000. Correct. Or I can write in the outer column also. There is no need to write it this way. You can simply put it in the outer column. I will write in the outer column 19,000. Correct? Then in the question it is also given that this liability provision for tax was settled at 1,11,600 if you remember. Because income tax authorities determine the liability at 1,11,600. So obviously I will have to settle this liability at this value. Now the next question is that we have to pay to the creditors also. But right now, I do not know how much I am going to pay to the creditors. Correct? But I can pay the liquidation, liquidation expenses. To, just wait. Liquidation expense, because this time, liquidation expenses. Because this time, vendor company is bearing the expenses. So entry will be realization account, debit to cash account. So liquidation expenses 4,000. Now only thing remaining is that I have to pay to creditors. Anyway, first what I will do, all these three items, if I am going to tell you them, it will be equal to 19,000 plus 1,11,600 plus 4,000. 1,34,600 I will write here by realization. Correct. It means creditors, sorry, it means I am paying acceptances, plus provision for tax, and plus liquidation expenses. You need not require to mention just for your later on reference. So total amount is 1,34,600. This is the amount you have now used in paying what we call acceptances, provision for tax and liquidation expenses. Now I am going to balance the cash account. Why I am going to balance the cash account? Because in this question it was stated that whatever balance is there after payment of liquidation expenses will be used in settling the creditors. So now I will have to compute the balance. In order to compute the balance, I will write 1 flag 58,800 plus 79,500 and I will subtract 1, 3, 4, 600. So the balance which I am getting is 1,3,700. 1, 3,700 is the your balance. Correct? So that means this is the balancing figure. This much of balanced cash will be used in paying the creditors. 
So that is why I am writing here with red pen two cash creditors one lakh three thousand seven hundred. So this much amount I will have to pay to the creditors in this particular question. Is it clear to you or not? So that is so cash account will get automatically closed now. I will have to balance this particular account and in order to balance, in fact, we can straight away look into the solution now because otherwise it will unnecessarily consume time. So your balancing figure will be, will be because I am not able to recapitulate, just wait. Right here. So our purchase consideration was okay, 10 lakh, correct? Two lakh fifty thousand. Everything is given in the solution, and your loss or profit is one lakh eighteen thousand in this particular question. Correct. So one lakh eighteen thousand is your profit. So and you must check also. You must make a check also. So profit is one lakh eighteen thousand in this particular case. So whatever profit is there, that profit will be transferred to shareholder. Profit transferred to shareholder. Profit transferred to shareholders 1 lakh 18,000 1 lakh 18,000 worth of profit is there and this profit will be written over here by realization account 1 lakh 18,000 in this manner you are going to do the solution of this particular question is it clear to you or not is it clear absolutely clear now you let me know how you are going to pass the entry in the books of purchasing company. So I am not going to pass the entry at least in the books of purchasing company that I can show you through solution because now these are the ledger accounts which we have already prepared. See in this particular question after purchasing company is already closed, realization and cash account are already closed, correct? So shareholders account will automatically get best. Now we come over to entries in the books of purchasing company look into your solution first of all you let me know whenever you start what we call doing accounting in the books of purchasing company first of all you raise question to yourself what was the question number one are all the assets and liabilities are taken over no no none of the liabilities taken over besides that debtors and cash at bank were also not taken over so very first question is not meeting the criteria of affirmativeness so obviously I need not require to actually unnecessarily go through the other question because very first condition is violated. That is why it will become a case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase. I have already told you most of the times you will have amalgamation in the nature of purchase case. Of course I have kept lots of questions later on for amalgamation in the nature of merger but first try to understand this particular aspect. Now if it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase what will be your first entry? Business purchase account debit to liquidator of vendor company this is the entry which we are supposed to write then here i have written sundry assets taken over 10 lakh you can write it in this manner because which are the assets which we have taken over we have already computed in working load when we computed the amount of purchase consideration over there we have already written all those assets which have been taken over and at which value those assets have been taken over. So that is why I have written here sundry asset taken over 10 lakh straight away. Otherwise, you can write all the items like bills, disable, machinery, furniture, in fittings, whatever items you have taken over. In this question, none of the liability has been taken over to business purchase account 10 lakh. Now you can see in this time we are not having what we call any difference. Generally, under net assets method, under net assets method, you will not have any difference in the second entry. Now, all we have to do is to pay to the vendor company. And when you will pay to the vendor company, your entry will be liquidator of vendor company account debit. In this question, we are not paying them any cash. We are paying them preference share capital 250 And I told you 2,500 shares of 100 each earlier. And we are paying equity share capital. That is 750000 how many shares we are issuing? 93,750 shares of 10 each, but at the rate of 8 paid up. This is how we are going to do this particular question. Is it clear to you or not? Yes, sir, absolutely. Now we move over to 2.2. Next question. Again, a very strong question, not an easy question. The 
examination problem also and in this particular question we will learn also concept of intercompany owings and unrealized profit what we mean by that i will let you know first of all pay attention over here following is the balance sheet of ahat limited as on 31st of 3 2023 correct now if you will look into the balance sheet share capital is 8 lakh general reserve 80 3 lakh 60 where these item will be posted now you are well aware of correct similarly in this question we have 10 percent debentures as a liability loan from director also another liability and creditor so three liabilities are there in this particular question so far then as far as assets are concerned land and building plant and machinery and goodwill is also appearing in the balance sheet besides that we are having miscellaneous expenditure yet to be written off that is equal to 34,000 and then stock 2 lakh 20 data is 260 1 lakh 36,000 so this is the question so far correct now question says just wait I just want to make a check in this particular question right Ahsas Limited agreed to absorb Ahat Limited on the following terms and condition. So a new company, in fact another existing company, Ahsas Limited, agreed to what we call absorb the Ahat Limited. Now when it absorb the Ahat Limited, as per the agreement, purchasing company will take over all assets, all assets, except cash, except cash, uh, sorry, except bank balance add their book value less 10 percent so except cash at bank except cash at bank suppose if i leave cash at bank for a while correct so other assets are land and building plant and machinery goodwill miscellaneous expenditure cannot be taken over because these are valueless items you will post them to the debit side of shareholders account i need not require to tell you so all other asset land and building have been taken over at 10 percent less plant and machinery also at 10 percent less it seems for a while that goodwill is also being taken over at 10 percent less for a while because we have simply gone through till up to this particular point so as per this information it seems that other assets have been taken over at book value less 10 percent correct but now the question states that goodwill is goodwill is to be valued at four years purchase of super profits assuming that normal rate of return is eight percent on the combined amount of share capital and general reserve <clears throat> now in this question that means goodwill is not taken over at 10 at 10 percent less correct so now we can say that land and building plant and machinery stock and data have been taken over at book value less 10 percent but goodwill has been valued separately goodwill has been valued separately and in order to value the goodwill question has stated that goodwill need to be valued at four years purchase of super profits what is super profits in order to find out super profits you must have average profit and from average profit you must subtract normal profit to get your super profits once you have the super profit then you simply multiply it with four to get your amount of goodwill now in this question when you will compute the normal profits as we know normal profit basically means normal rate of return into capital employed most of the time because we have learned in this manner correct however in this particular question it is stated that normal rate of return will be eight percent on the combined amount of share capital and general reserve that means in order to find out normal profit what i am going to do i will simply take eight percent of share capital plus general reserve and then this eight percent will be my normal profit and average profit is given somewhere here average profit is one lakh twenty four thousand four hundred it is given to you you in the question further it is given that purchasing company to take over creditors at book value so purchasing company will take over creditors at book value indirectly it means there are three liability and out of three liability it is stated that creditors are being taken over that means these two liabilities are not being taken over out of three liability only it is written that creditors are being taken over so automatically it means other two liabilities are not taken over Further, it is given that liquidation expenses amounted to 16,000. Once again, in this particular question, it is not mentioned which company is bearing these expenses. So, obviously, vendor company will bear the expenses. 
creditors of purchasing company now these two lines are related to purchasing companies and these two line are having a relation with concepts of intercompany transaction and unrealized profit unrealized profit now in these two these two lines creditors of purchasing company include 40000 is still due to vendor company see here let us say this is the purchasing company and purchasing company must be having we are not having the balance sheet of purchasing company but just to make the point clear whatever creditors they are having it is written that creditors of purchasing company so creditors of purchasing company are having 40000 worth of amount which they are supposed to pay to the vendor company creditors of purchasing company include 40000 is still due to vendor company is still due to vendor company means at the time of absorption when purchasing company is taking over the vendor company so on that date in the books of purchasing company there were creditors which they were supposed to pay to the vendor company so if purchasing company is saying that we are having creditors 40000 which we are supposed to pay to the vendor automatically it means in the books of vendor company whatever debtors are there for example in this question debtors are worth rupees 2 lakh 60000 so in these debtors in these debtors 40000 worth of amount must be such which vendor company must receive from the purchasing company it is as simple as that if i am saying that i have to pay you 40000 so in your asset side there must be 40000 receivable from i isn't it or not so that is the situation here point here is that whatever debtors that is 2 lakh 60000 worth of debtors are given in this question so whatever debtors are there in those debtors 40000 worth of amount is receivable by vendor company from the purchasing company correct now what will happen because purchasing company will take over the vendor company now purchasing company will take over the vendor company what will happen see here in the purchasing company creditors are already there and purchasing company is claiming that we are supposed to pay it to the vendor company now we will take over their assets and liability that mean when we are going to take over the vendor company these debtors these debtors will shift here also because their assets will become our assets that mean now in the purchasing company spokes what is being reflected that we are supposed to pay 40000 to ourselves and we are supposed to receive 40000 from ourselves now this is not possible so that is why such transactions which are known as intercompany transaction will have to be cancelled out so in the books of purchasing company i will have to pass an entry to to cancel out creditors and debtors worth rupees 40000 so in order to cancel out debtors and creditors worth rupees 40000 i am going to debit the creditors in the books of purchasing company after having passed all the normal entries no related to business purchase account to liquidator then asset taken over to liabilities taken over then after payment to liquidator then i am going to pass another entry creditors account debit to debtors account so in order to wipe out intercompany transaction liabilities must be debited and assets must be credited because we have to reduce them in order to reduce liability you have to debit them and in order to reduce assets you have to credit them so this is the this is the amount you will use to cancel out this but this is besides this there is another important segment so first let me rub it out this portion purchasing company now the question says that purchasing company sold prior to 31 3 means before the balance sheet date goods costing 1 lakh 20000 to vendor company for 1 lakh 60000 so prior to amalgamation because on 31 3 2023 they are merging with each other correct prior to that question states that purchasing company purchasing company sold sold goods to vendor company and cost price of the goods sold is 1 lakh 
However, they were sold to vendor company at a selling price of one lakh sixty thousand. At a selling price of one lakh sixty thousand. Suppose if I will sell one lakh twenty thousand worth of goods at one sixty to somebody, so what is the profit margin? Sir, profit margin obviously is forty thousand, right? And if I am going to ask you what is the margin on sales, so you are going to divide it by sales. That means one fourth or twenty five percent. Correct. Twenty five percent is the profit. That means when purchasing company sold goods to vendor companies for one lakh sixty thousand, because purchasing company will not tell to vendor company that cost is one twenty. They will simply sell it, sell it at one sixty to vendor company. So if I am going to sell to you. One lakh sixty thousand worth, sorry, goods for rupees one lakh sixty. I will not reveal my profit to you. Number one, so this is selling price from my perspective, from purchasing company's perspective. But because you are purchasing these goods from me, obviously whatever price you are going to pay, that is one lakh sixty, you are going to pay. So you will consider one lakh sixty as your cost price. Is it clear to you? That is what we call selling price from the purchasing company's perspective. But from the vendor company's perspective, it is the cost price. Is it is as simple as that. Anyway, the, so important point is that purchasing company acquired a profit margin of twenty five percent. Now, what is happening when when these two companies are amalgamating? Not exactly amalgamating. In fact, when purchasing company is taking over the vendor company, so on that date, it was found that out of these goods. Out of one lakh sixty thousand worth of goods which vendor company had purchased from the purchasing company, one lakh worth of goods are still in stock of vendor company. So out of this one lakh sixty thousand, one lakh worth of goods are still with the vendor company. Is still with the vendor company. Now, suppose if this question would have told only this this much of information that purchasing company sold. One lakh forty thousand worth of goods for one lakh sixty, or one lakh twenty thousand worth of goods for one lakh sixty, and nothing else would have been mentioned. Then no treatment would have been needed. The treatment is needed only if one company sells goods to the other company, and out of such sales, some of the goods are still in the stock. Then only some treatment will be needed. So out of one sixty, one lakh worth of goods are with the vendor company. So now what will happen? The point here is that because now purchasing company will take over your assets, your liability, and your assets. When purchasing company will take over your stock, purchasing company will immediately recapitalize. Oh my God, these goods were sold by us to them. Are you getting my point or not? So purchasing company knows that these goods are at selling price because they had sold one lakh sixty thousand worth of goods and. So out of one lakh sixty, one lakh worth of goods are is still with the vendor. But problem is that these one lakh worth of goods will again come back to purchasing company because now purchasing company is acquiring the vendor company. So now suddenly the purchasing company will realize actually these these goods are at selling price because one lakh is the selling price and purchasing company knows about that. And purchasing company is also aware of the fact that as per accounting standard two. The inventory must be presented at real price, isn't it or not? I do not want to use the word unnecessarily at lower of NRV and cost. Simply at real price. So one lakh is the selling price, but what is their real price? The real price is we know that in these one lakh worth of goods, profit margin is one fourth. So I will apply one fourth, twenty five thousand. So now I will come to know. That out of these one lakh worth of goods, out of this remaining one lakh worth of goods, cost portion is actually seventy five thousand, and twenty five thousand actually is the profit margin. Is it clear to you or not? Correct. Logically, logically. Try to understand logically now. It is the duty of the purchasing company to reduce twenty five thousand from the profits, because when we sold the goods to you earlier, at that time we must have included forty thousand in our profit and loss account. Under the impression that we have sold goods to you, costing one twenty at one sixty, so we have earned a profit of forty. So this 
that particular uh, 40,000 worth of profit must have been already included by purchasing company in its profit. But now suddenly the purchasing company will find that out of this 1,60,000 worth of sale, 1 lakh worth of sale hasn't materialized because 1 lakh worth of goods are coming back to us. Is it clear to you or not? So purchasing company logically should now reduce its profit and loss account. Logically try to understand what the point I'm trying to hammer into your mind. I will have to use the word hammer here. It's a pretty important topic. Logically my entry should have been profit and loss account debit to stock account because I must reduce the stock by 25,000 and my profits which I which have unnecessarily gone up by 25,000 I must reduce it actually this is known as concept of unrealized profit so unrealized profit concept will take place only when it when either of these two companies will sell their goods to each other and some of the goods are remaining is it clear but but try to understand logically I told the entry should have been like this but it depends whether it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger or purchase. Because it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase, because as per AS 14, we know that if the case is amalgamation in the nature of purchase, all the losses will be debited, will not be treated as revenue losses, will be treated as capital losses. That means all the losses arising because of absorption amalgamation will be treated as capital losses. So logically the entry should have been profit and loss account. But because it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase, I will not debit profit and loss account. I will debit goodwill account. Is it clear to you? So my entry will be goodwill account debit to stock. So entry should have been goodwill account debit to stock account and logically the amount should have been 25,000. But if you want to give a standard solution, high quality solution you must understand another important point when you are taking these goods back that means when you are acquiring the assets of purchase of vendor company it is clearly mentioned in the question that all the assets which you are taking over are generally at book value less 10 percent that means one lakh worth of goods are coming back to you not at a price of one lakh actually the no doubt about that. These are 1 lakh worth of goods, but you are taking them back at 90,000. Because 1 lakh worth of goods are being taken by you at 90,000 only. So here again, 10,000 worth of loss you have already incurred. Try to understand this particular point. So that is the reason why I am trying to tell you, logically the entry should have been by 25,000. But because these goods were taken back at 90,000, so scenario is that 90,000 worth of goods are being taken, inventory worth 1 lakh is coming back to us, but we are taking them back at 90,000. However, we know that the cost price of these goods is 75,000. So in order to bring them to the what we call cost price, so my entry should be by rupees 15,000, not by 25,000. This is the point which you need to understand. So these are the two concepts related to intercompany transaction and unrealized profit. Is it clear to you or not? Now rest of the question as far as it's concerned, it is pretty easy and you can handle it quite well. So this is the scenario of this entire question. Now, coming back to the question. Now if we will come back to the question, in this question, first of all, we have gone through till up to only this value. Next point is purchase, one important line which we skipped. The purchase consideration is to be paid, paid in cash to the extent of 6 lakhs. So whatever is the amount of purchase consideration, we are receiving 6 lakhs by way of cash and the balance. So net assets method will be used and the balance in fully paid shares of 100 each at 125 per share. So first of all, I will have to determine the purchase consideration. Out of that, I will, uh, 6 lakh worth of payment is being by way of cash. I will subtract 6 lakh. Whatever remaining balance will be there, I will receive it by way of equity share. This is the question. Is it clear to you? Now, suppose if you start this particular question, first of all, you will have to find out the purchase consideration. How are you are going to find the amount, amount of purchase consideration? Simply pay attention because I have already explained each and every point. 
First of all, I need to find out the amount of goodwill. First of all, I will write average profit, which is given in the question. These are my handwritten notes only, class notes only, which I have typed. You are being given in a typed manner. That's a different manner. Less 8%. Then I told you, you have to find out the normal profit. So, and what is your normal profit in this case? That is based upon 8% of combined amount of capital plus reserves. Combined amount of capital plus reserve. Now, capital given in the balance sheet is 8 lakh and general reserve given in the balance sheet as 80,000. So, combined amount is 8 lakh 80,000. 8% will be equal to 70,400. So, you have been able to determine the normal profit. Now, of course, once you have determined the normal profit, so this, instead of writing such a big sentence, you can simply write super profits. So, this is your super profits, correct? And then, you will multiply it with years of purchase 4, so you will get your goodwill. 2 lakh 16. That means purchasing companies taking over your goodwill at 2 lakh 16,000. And building is being taken over at book value less 10%. So that is why here I have written 3 lakh 6,000. Similarly, purchasing company has taken over your plant and machinery that is 6 lakh 40,000 less 10%. That is 5 lakh 76,000. Similarly, stock 220 less 10% at 1 lakh 98. Data's 260 minus 10 percent, 2 lakh 34, and cash is not taken over in this particular question. And goodwill was taken over at 2 lakh 16 because goodwill is valued separately. So total assets, which total asset at which you are taking them over, is equal to 15 lakh 20 thousand. This is not the total. Total is 15 lakh 30 thousand. Correct. Now in this question, there were three liabilities. Out of these three liability, how many liabilities were being taken over? Sir, only one. So, less liability is taken over. Creditors are worth rupees 3 lakh 20. So, asset taken over is 15 lakh 30. Liability taken over is 3 lakh 20. So, your purchase consideration is 12 lakh 10,000. Is it clear to you or not? Right, sir. Purchase consideration is 12 lakh 10. Now, out of this 12 lakh 10,000, you are receiving 6 lakh by way of cash. And the remaining amount, 6 lakh 10,000, you are going to receive by way of equity shares. Now, if you want to know how many equity share purchasing company will issue, you divide 6 lakh 10,000 by 125. Why? Because purchasing company is issuing the share at a premium of 25. Face value is 100, premium is 25. So, total number of share purchasing company will issue 4880. Is it clear to you? These are the initial working. Then you move over to the books of vendor company, which you can manage now very easily. Ledger accounts in the books of vendor company. As usual, to prepare the ledger account, first of all, what we are supposed to do? First of all, we are going to close the asset side. See, in the balance sheet, goodwill is 130. So I will write here 130. I've, so many times I have told you now, while preparing, while posting, use the book value. Building, plant and machinery, stock, Daters, all the assets you have taken over here and the cash balance which was uh, 1 lakh 36 thousand you have posted to the debit side of cash account in the cash account the in the asset side there is a, what we call no uh, value less item in this particular question I think so correct yes there there is one item I think miscellaneous expenditure I think there was one item miscellaneous expenditure because when we were going through the balance sheet are uh, right miscellaneous expenditure 34,000 is also there so miscellaneous expenditure will be posted to the debit side of shareholders account correct miscellaneous expenditure then we will move over to the liability side in the liability side your first item obviously is share capital so where share capital will be written on the credit side of shareholders account, you are going to write by share capital. Then there are general reserve that is 80,000. You are going to post it here. Profit and loss account. Correct. There are three liabilities. Out of these three liability, in only one is being taken over. But in spite of that, you will transfer all the three liability towards the credit side of realization account. You will transfer the debenture. You will transfer the loan. You will transfer the creditors. Although your debentures and loan are not taken over. Then, after closing your asset and liability side, pass the entry for purchase, purchase consideration by purchasing company. This is the entry. And in the purchasing company, you will cross it 12 lakh 10. 
you will receive the mode of payment 6 lakh you are receiving by way of cash and you are receiving what we call shares to the extent of 6 lakh 10,000. 6 lakh 10,000. Is it clear to you? Whatever cash you are receiving, that particular cash, 6 lakh will be posted to the debit side of cash account. Is it clear to you? And whatever shares you have received, those shares will be posted to the debit side of shareholders account, shares in purchasing company, 6 lakh 10,000. Correct? Then, you have to think upon the fact whether there is any liability which is not taken over. Yes, in fact, there are two liabilities which haven't been taken over. Deventures and loans. So don't forget to pay them off. So you will pay your entry will be realization account, debit to cash account. Deventures, that is 40,000 plus loan 1,60,000. So total. And in fact, I have also added liquidation expenses because in this case, we are vendor company is bearing the expenses. So entry will be realization account, debit to cash account. So include it here itself. So 40,000 plus 160 for loan and 16,000 for liquidation expenses. So 216,000 you have paid off and you will cross this item to the credit side of cash account. Correct. Now you will close your realization account. And in this question, there is a loss to the extent of 76,000. This loss will be posted to the debit side of shareholders account. Then you will balance your cash account and balancing figure is 5,20,000. This 5,20,000 you will write over here. And ultimately, this particular account will get closed. Is it clear to you? Now we come over to the purchasing company. As far as purchasing company is concerned in this particular question, now you let me know whether it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase or amalgamation in the nature of merger. Sir, it is a case of amalgamation in, amalgamation in the nature of purchase. Now, this is not the way. The first thing is that you have to ask your ask some question. First question, are all assets and liabilities taken over? The very first question fails to meet the criteria. So, that means it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase. First entry, business purchase account debit to liquidator of vendor company. Then, sundry assets. See, I have directly written sundry assets. Why? Because in order to compute the purchase consideration, we have already written over there, which are the assets we are taking over. So that is why I have included 15,30 straight away. Otherwise, you can write separately, but it is a better policy. Simply write working note number one. For example, in your working note number one means initially here, we have written that we have taken over goodwill building. We have taken over goodwill building plant and machinery stock daters so not cash correct goodwill building plant and machinery stock daters and their total is equal to 15 lakh 30 thousand so this is the way you have to pass the entry sundry assets and you have taken over only creditors two business purchase 12 lakh 10 no balancing figure in this case reason being is that we have computed the consideration through net assets method under net assets method you will not get any balance in your second entry then you will pay to the what we call liquidator. You are supposed to pay them how much? You are supposed to pay them 12 lakh 10,000, not 15 lakh 30, 12 lakh 10,000. This is the amount of amount which you are supposed to pay. In cash, you are paying 6 lakh. And you will write then two share capital because you have computed that 4,880 shares you are issuing. So you will write 4,880 shares of 100 each. That is equal to 4 lakh 88. And then security premium at the rate of 25, which will be equal to 1,12,000. Now, the initial discussion which we were having, entry for intercompany transaction, creditors and debtors will have to be reduced. In order to reduce them, I have already told you, we pass this particular entry. And similarly, entry for clearing unrealized profit from the stock. So your entry is goodwill account debit to stock account. However, However, if this case would have been a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger, this entry would have been profit and loss account debit to stock account. Is it clear to you or not? Yes, sir. Now it is absolutely clear. So till up to 2.2, we have done in this particular session. Uh, you try out question number 2.3 I'm sure you, you should be in a position to do this particular question. Correct. And... Then I will pick up, and then after that, after that, after that, we'll pick up net payment method of purchase consideration. So net payment method of purchase consideration is not easy. It is quite interesting. 
I'm not saying that it is tough, but it's quite interesting, but at the same time, not easy. That doesn't mean that it is tough. Something which is not easy, that means not tough, but it is not easy. Correct? Okay, then, I think in this particular session, that's enough. So, shall we meet you in the next session with something new. Hello and welcome again to this particular session. So in the last one, we finished till up to 2.2. I will also discuss 2.3. Don't worry about that. Correct. Now we are moving to another section, but I'm not moving over to section 3. Remember one thing. I'm moving over to section 4. First, we will finish off section 4 and then we will come back to section 3. Why that? I will let you know later on. Correct. So section 4 deals with intrinsic value of method of purchase consideration. We have already seen that when purchase consideration is not given in the question, there are three methods available with us whereby we can compute what we call purchase consideration. One was net assets method. We saw how we have to compute purchase consideration by applying net assets approach. Correct. That's quite easy, in fact. And now we are moving over to intrinsic value method of purchase consideration. What is intrinsic value method of purchase consideration and how? the purchase consideration under this particular method is arrived at. We are going to discuss all these points in detail and at great length. So just have a look and show a bit of patience and let's take up this particular question. And this is a concept question just to explain the what we call intrinsic value of method of purchase consideration. Correct. The following are the balance sheet of K limited and, and J limited as on 30th of September 2019 it is given to you. and this is the first question, I think, where we are given the balance sheet of both purchasing company and also uh, the vendor company. We will see later on that K Limited is taking over J Limited. So K Limited will be your purchasing company and J Limited will be your vendor company. So as far as items are concerned, we have equity share capital. And then we have in this particular case, general reserves and profit and loss account, general reserve and profit and loss account. Besides that, in this particular question, you must have noticed there are three liabilities, debentures, creditors and bills payable. However, as far as this particular company, J Limited is concerned, it is not having debenture, only two liabilities. This is your vendor company. And as far as assets are concerned, we have three assets only, property, plant and equipment, investment. However, there is no investment as far as J Limited is concerned. And then current asset, three assets only. It's a small question, as I just told you. This question has been framed to explain the what we call intrinsic value method. And then it is given in the question that board of directors of K Limited, board of directors of K Limited, correct, uh, approved to take over J Limited. So it is given in the question directly in this manner that J Limited is, uh, sorry, K Limited is taking over J Limited. It automatically means all the assets and liabilities are taken over, correct? because nothing is mentioned which assets are being taken and which liabilities are being taken. So if nothing is given in the question, then we shall always presume that all the assets and liabilities are being taken over. But the important point is that here it is given in the question that find out the ratio of exchange of share on the basis of book values. So whenever, whenever intrinsic value of shares based purchase consideration uh, will be given in the question, Correct. How will you find out? Because in this particular situation, we will see that question will directly mention that you have to apply intrinsic value of shares method. But sir, in this question, it is not mentioned. It is mentioned indirectly. It is written, find out the ratio of exchange of shares on the basis of book value. Because intrinsic value of shares method, as we will see, is also known as valuation of share on the basis of net assets. Correct. So now we will have a discussion. So in this particular question, we have to compute the purchase consideration through intrinsic value of share. So as far as intrinsic value of shares method is concerned, question will directly tell you that you have to actually find out either ratio of exchange or you have to value the share on the basis of what we call net assets. So that these are enough hints uh, through which you can easily find out that you have to actually adopt the intrinsic value of method. Now, in order to find out intrinsic value of method, what we are supposed to do, correct? So obviously I will need a bit of a space. Okay, this much is enough and 
I will create some more space for me. So let's have a look over here now. How to compute intrinsic value of shares? What exactly intrinsic value of share is? Why companies actually complete? Why companies uh, compute intrinsic value of share? You will see later on that in practical life, actually, this is very widely and very popular method. Whenever a particular company takes over another company, correct? So through intrinsic value of shares only, they decide at what sort of purchase consideration they are going to deliver to the vendor company. I will explain all these points in great detail. But first of all, let me start with the question. Under step one, as I told you, you are supposed to compute intrinsic value of share. This should be your first target, intrinsic value of share. What exactly intrinsic value of share is, I will let you know in a short while. Intrinsic value of share. Intrinsic value of shares. Actually, why we are picking up section four first? Because intrinsic value of shares methodology is nothing but it is just a variant of net assets method. It is quite similar to that, correct? So we will have to find out the intrinsic value of share and we will have to find out the intrinsic value of share of both the companies. That means in this particular case, the purchasing company, that is uh, your, in this particular case, K Limited purchasing company and vendor company. In order to compute the intrinsic value of share, you will have to first of all find out the net assets and in order to determine the net assets as i told you we are not doing at this particular moment any what we call working within the accounts correct all these things are being done outside the accounts so in case if there would be any uh, revised value i am going to consider that so for your first target should be to compute the net assets and you know actually how to compute the net assets in order to find out net assets first of all I will write the net assets of these companies. There are only three items as far as asset sites are concerned, correct? So first of all, let me write property, plant and equipment. There is no revised value. Had it been, I would have written the revised value, 7 lakh and 3 lakh. So first of all, you have to now record all the assets. Then similarly, investments are there. However, as far as investments are concerned, investments are related to only purchasing company. Vendor company is not having any investment. Then we will take up current asset. As far as current assets are concerned, 6 lakh and 2 lakh we are given in this particular question. So I have noted them also. That is 6 lakh and 2 lakh. 6 lakh and 2 lakh. We will total these assets. The total of the assets is equal to 12 plus 6 is equal to 18 lakh and 5 lakh. Then I am going to subtract the liabilities. That is how we determine net assets, isn't it or not? In this question, there are three liabilities. First one is debentures, 3 lakh 50,000. However, debenture is related to only purchasing company. There are no debentures as far as vendor company is concerned, correct? Then we have in this particular case, creditors. So as far as creditors are concerned, 2 lakh worth of creditors are there. So you gonna write 2 lakh and then 1 lakh, obviously. So after collecting, in fact, there is one more liability. Creditors is equal to 2 lakh and 1 lakh and then bills payable are also there. Three liabilities are there, 50,000 and 40,000. So after collecting all your assets and liabilities, now you subtract the tot liabilities from the total of the assets. So 18 lakh minus 6 lakh will be equal to 12 lakh. Correct? And 5 lakh minus 1 lakh 40,000 will be equal to 3 lakh 60,000. So your first step should be to compute what we call net assets. By subtracting liabilities from the assets, obviously we get net assets. But what we mean by net assets? What does net asset reflect? Net assets also means assets available for shareholders. Assets available for shareholders. Why it, net assets are known as assets available for shareholders? Because, just presume for a while, let us say both these companies are getting liquidated. Just presume for a while. Suppose both these companies will get liquidated, then what will happen? Assets will realize 18 lakh and then we will subtract what we call liabilities because out of realization from the assets, first of all, we are going to pay to the liabilities. So after paying to the liabilities, we are left up with 12 lakh. To whom this 12 lakh would belong? 
this 12 lakh would belong to the shareholders. So that is why net assets are also known as assets available for shareholder. Now importantly, if in this particular question there would have been any preference share capital, I would have had subtracted it also. However, in this particular question, preference share capital is not given. So by subtracting preference share capital from the net assets, because whatever net assets are available, first of all, preference shareholder will have a right over there. However, in this particular question, preference share capital is not given. So now we are left up with assets available for equity share. It is known as assets available for equity shares. So your first target to compute intrinsic value of share is to compute assets available for equity shares. Now, I hope you got a bit of idea what we mean by assets available for equity share. It means, it means that in a rarest of rare, let us say, assumption, let us say both these companies will get liquidated. In then, then in that case, we would say that assets available for equity shares are 12 lakh and 3 lakh 60 thousand respectively. Is it clear to you? Now, generally intrinsic value of share in practical life is computed by such investors who invest very heavy amounts and in heavy blocks of shares. Correct, because they are concerned about what we call the safety of their investment. So that is the reason actually more often than not actually they compute intrinsic value of share. Why we compute intrinsic value of share if somebody would ask you and by whom it is generally computed in practical life. Intrinsic value of share in practical life is generally computed by heavy investor who invest heavy amounts, as I said, in heavy blocks of what we call share, whose investments are very huge. So quite obviously, if you have spent a very huge amount, you must be actually concerned about the safety of your money. And in order to know whether your money is absolutely safe, you are going to compute intrinsic value of share. And in order to compute the intrinsic value of share, your view will be highly pessimistic. Pessimistic in the sense means you will presume that today, if, if this particular company would get liquidated, then what will be the situation? The situation will be that total assets available for equity share will be equal to 12 lakh. Now, if I am going to divide it by number of shares, number of equity share, suppose I am going to ask you the number of share. If you look into the column of what we call K limited, their share capital is 4 lakh and one share is of 10 each. So that means actually 40,000 worth of shares as far as K limited is concerned is having 40,000 shareholder. That means assets available for equity shares are 12 lakh. And total number of shares are 40,000. So each shareholder will get, I think, rupees 30 per share. So that means shareholder need not require to worry about the what we call uh, their investment. Because in case if this company would get liquidated today, it's still the, it's still your investment is safe because you have invested in a share of rupees 10 each. The face value of share is 10 each. And company has got sufficient what we call asset. That means in order to back a share of what we call 10 each, company is having rupees 30 worth of assets. So position of the company is very strong. It is known as intrinsic value of shares. By dividing the assets available for equity shares, by the number of equity share, we get intrinsic value of share. Now it is known as intrinsic value of share. Intrinsic means inside value. It is known as intrinsic value of share because this value is never ever released publicly. That is why it is known as intrinsic value of share. And I told, I'm telling you that this is the most practical concept in practical life. Whenever a company would take over the other company, generally the company will compute the intrinsic value of shares of each company to decide that what sort of consideration they are going to deliver to the vendor company. So we have determined intrinsic value of share of purchasing company and as far as vendor company is concerned, their total share capital is 1,80,000 and one share is of 10 each. So number of share is equal to 18,000. And if I'm going to divide 3,60 by 18,000, I will get rupees 20. So rupees 20. Correct. So this is the intrinsic value of share of purchasing company. Is it clear to you? Sorry, vendor company. Now we have computed the intrinsic value of share of both the company. Correct. This should be your first target. Secondly, second, second step should be to write the amount of purchase consideration. Now, what will be the amount of purchase consideration? Suppose if I'm going to ask you in this particular question, suppose you are the purchasing company, then how much you should pay to the vendor company 
amount of purchase consideration. What will be your amount of purchase consideration? You have already computed that. This is the amount 3,60,000 because it is assets minus liability, it is equal to net assets. So purchase consideration is nothing but net assets. So we may say that amount of purchase consideration is equal to net assets. That is equal to 3,60,000. So you have already computed, while computing the intrinsic value of share, automatically you will also compute the purchase consideration. But point here is that, now the next step is how many number of share you are purchasing, how many uh, number of share your company, that is purchasing company would issue to the vendor company to discharge 3,60,000 worth of purchase consideration. That should be your next step. Number of share, number of shares to be issued, number of shares to be issued by purchasing company, to be issued by purchasing company to discharge purchase consideration, to discharge purchase consideration. So how will you determine that how many number of share your company, purchasing company should issue to the vendor company to discharge the amount of purchase consideration? Is it clear? So for that, what you will have to do, you will have to write the amount of purchase consideration and you will have to divide it by the intrinsic value of share of purchasing company. That means intrinsic value of shares, intrinsic value of share basically is computed to know how many number of share we should deliver to the vendor company. That is the basic what we call theme of this methodology. So your purchase consideration is 360000 an intrinsic value of share of purchasing company we just computed is equal to 30 rupees 30. So if I am going to divide 360 by 30, I will get I think 12,000 shares. Sorry, not rupee. I will cut, wipe it out. So 12,000. So it means purchasing company shall issue 12,000 shares. 12,000 shares. It means, it means... Purchasing company, it means purchasing company shall issue, shall issue how many shares? 12,000 shares of rupees 10 each, of rupees 10 each at the rate of 30. That means purchasing company will issue 12,000 shares to the vendor company at the rate of 30. Correct. Now try to understand the main point which I am trying to uh, explain. Next point is ratio of exchange. What is this ratio of exchange? So what is this ratio of exchange? Just pay attention here. I will write here purchasing company and I will write here vendor company. Now, how many sh number of shares of vendor company is having? 18,000 shares. See, in practical life, it is not possible that if I will take your company and your company is having 18,000 shares, that doesn't mean that the, as a purchasing company, I will issue you only 18,000 shares. It is not possible. Correct? So how many number of shares we should issue to you? That Here the problem arises. And this problem is solved by computing the intrinsic value of shares. Is it clear to you? That is why I am telling you that this is the most practical, what we call methodology, of determining the number of share or ratio of exchange. Ratio of exchange means... If suppose you are having what we call 12,000 share, then how many number of share actually we should issue? If you are having 18,000 share, how many number of share we should issue? So in what ratio we should issue, to you, issue the shares to you? That is what we mean by ratio of exchange. Now you must have noticed in this case, purchasing company is issuing, issuing 
12,000 share as we have just computed. We are issuing only 12,000 shares, but there are 18,000 shareholders of the venture company. But anyway, first of all, I will take the ratio. The ratio will be 2 is to 3. Isn't it or not? It is very easy to find out the ratio of exchange. So ratio of exchange is 2 is to 3. What we mean by 2 is to 3? It means for every 3 share, for every 3 share, suppose you are shareholder of vendor company and let us say you are in possession of only 3 shares. So purchasing company is telling that we are going to issue you only 2 shares for your every 3 shares. Then sir, it will be a gross injustice. It is not an injustice. Just pay attention. I will sh show you everything. Purchasing company is telling to the vendor company that for your three shares, we are going to issue you only two shares. As we have just computed the intrinsic value of the share, when we saw that vendor company is having intrinsic value of rupees 20. So that means your three shares are commanding a value of 60, whereas our intrinsic value is 30. So it means for every 60 rupees, we are offering 60 rupees only. Is it clear to you or not? I hope now the things has be, have, things must have become actually clearer to you. So this is the entire story and concept of the intrinsic value of shares. So you must have noticed that why it is the most practical concept and why most authentic one. So through this particular concept, we will decide at how many number of share we should issue to you. Correct. So even though you are having 18,000 share, but our company's 12,000 shares are quite what we call capable of meeting the value of your 18,000 share because we are having what we call higher intrinsic value or share. So if the question says, because in this question only ratio of exchange is asked, logically I should finish here, but I have to explain the things also. Now, in this question, I will move, create more space. Now, in this question, further, generally when the question of intrinsic value of share is asked in the examination, to be very honest with you, never ever they are going to ask you, never ever they are going to ask you accounting aspects in the books of vendor company, but still I am doing it for you. Step number four or five, whatever it is. Correct? So, books of vendor company. Books of vendor company. In vendor company, suppose if I am going to do the accounting, then I will prepare as usual purchasing company account, isn't it or not? Purchasing company account, then I am going to prepare a realization account and also I am going to prepare shareholders account. I am intentionally not preparing cash account. We will see that in this particular question, we will not need any cash account, correct? Purchasing company, realization account, within a flick of second you can prepare realization account and of course shareholders account. So these are the accounts vendor company prepares. Now first of all as usual we will look into the assets of the purchasing company. And there are three, there are three assets, in fact logically there are two assets only of vendor company sorry. So vendor company property, plant and equipment 3 lakh, there are no investment as far as vendor company is concerned, only current assets are there and current asset is equal to 2 lakh. So that's all as far as asset side is concerned. Now we move over to the other side. As far as J Limited, the vendor company is concerned, their share capital is 1 lakh 80,000. Obviously the share capital will find place in the shareholders account. And then we have in this case general reserve. General reserve is equal to 1 lakh. Free reserve it is. And also profit and loss account is there to the extent of 80,000. We will write 80,000. Correct? And then in this particular question, there are actually three liabilities. But vendor company is having only two liabilities, only creditors and bills payable. So creditors are equal to 1 lakh. So you are going to write here 1 lakh. And then we have in this particular case bills payable. So you are going to write bills payable also to the extent of 40,000. After having done up with the postings of what we call all the items of liability side and what we call asset side, the next step is purchase consideration. So first of all, we are going to write here by purchasing company, purchase consideration due 
as we compute it, purchase consideration is equal to 360,000. Obviously, we will cross it to the debit side of purchasing company and we are going to write over there to realization account 360,000. And in this case, purchasing company is will actually pay the entire amount by way of shares only because as I told you, purchasing company is paying 360000 on the basis of intrinsic value of share. It means entire purchase consideration is being delivered by purchasing company by way of shares only. Correct? So, we will receive the shares. How many shares actually you were receiving? 12,000 shares of rupees 10 each at the rate of 30. Anyway, here, shares in purchasing company. So, I am simply going to write here 360. This is how you are going to do this particular question. Clear? Now, whatever amount you have received by way of shares will be posted to the debit side, shares in purchasing company, to the debit side of shareholders account. That is 360,000. Now, in this question, all the liabilities are being taken over, so I need not require to pay any liability. Correct? And further, there are no expenses. So, all we have to do is to close this particular account. So, fortunately or unfortunately, whatever you may say, and this account is getting closed automatically. But that doesn't mean that you should start framing a rule that under what we call, under what we call intrinsic value of share, the realization account will automatically match. It happened per chance. It, that doesn't mean that always it will happen. So, there is neither any profit nor any loss. I have already told you hardly anything to be done in the books of vendor company. That is why examiner is not going to ask you accounting aspects in the books of vendor company under intrinsic value of share. So, I have done the accounting. You can see it was a matter of second. Now, books of. Now, we shall move over to the other part. Step number six. Books of purchasing company. Books of purchasing company. Now under purchasing company, you please let me know. First of all, what we should do if we want to do the accounting. So we must categorize the case into either as a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger or what we call purchase. Now, could you tell me in this particular question how I am going to actually categorize it? I told you actually the criteria. You ask yourself question number one, are all the assets and liabilities are being taken over? Yes. This time the answer is yes. So we will move over to the second question. Are all the assets and liabilities being taken over in book value? Answer again is yes. Because nowhere in the question any revised value is being taken, uh, is being written. Then the last question is, are the equity shareholders receiving payment by way of shares only, equity shares only, yes. So, all the questions are having answers in affirmative. That means it becomes a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger. So, it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger. Amalgamation in the nature of merger. Again, sometimes I have seen a student automatically frame rules of their own. Don't frame any such rule that under intrinsic value of share, the question will always be of merger. No, no, it is not possible. So, case of amalgamation in the nature of merger. This time, it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger because all the three criteria are met. And I told you, when there is a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger, there is not much difference in the entries, correct? Little bit of difference in entry number two, hard, hardly, correct? So, first of all, I will write entry number one. Your entry number one will be for taking over the business. For taking over business. Now, you are going to take over the business, taking over the business. When you will take over the business, what will be your entry? So, business purchase account debit, right? Business purchase account debit. Then, to liquidator of vendor company. This is your first entry, liquidator of vendor company. What should be the amount in this particular case? The amount will be equal to 3,60,000 because at this particular amount, we are taking over all the assets and liabilities. So, 3,60,000, 3,60,000, I am going to write. 
Is it clear to you? Now, what will be your second entry? Your second entry will be for taking over all the assets and liabilities. Correct? For taking over all assets and liabilities. All assets and liabilities. Now we will take over all the assets and liabilities. Correct? When we will take over all the assets and liabilities, there are three assets which we are picking up in this particular case. In fact, there are two assets of vendor company only. Property, plant and equipment, account, debit, 3 lakh. Then we have in this case current assets. Current assets is equal to 2 lakh. As far as liabilities are concerned, we have taken in this particular case creditors to the extent of 1 lakh. Besides creditor, we have bills payable, so we shall write bills payable also 40,000. And the major difference, as I told you, when there will be a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger, you will have to create reserves similar to the ones which are appearing in the balance sheet of, in the balance sheet of vendor company. In the balance sheet of the vendor company, there are two free reserves appearing. One is general reserve and another one is profit and loss account. General reserve amount, if you look into the balance sheet in the column of J Limited, correct, after equity share capital, they are written over there is equal to 1 lakh. General reserve is appearing at 1 lakh and profit and loss account is appearing at 80,000. So, under the case of merger, many among us have a habit of what we have. Many among us are having a habit of what we call telling to the student that all the reserves will be taken over. We are not taking over the reserves so many times actually I have told you and I am tired of what we call telling it so many times, correct? We cannot take over the reserves but we will have to create what we call similar sort of reserves which are appearing in the books of the vendor company. So in the books of vendor company as we saw general reserve is appearing. So, purchasing company will have to create a general reserve from its own resources and honestly speaking, it is a sort of loss to the purchasing company. Correct? But we have to. Accounting standards states that. So, general reserve I will create and in accounting, in the language of the standard, it is said that the purchasing company in case of merger will preserve the identity of all the reserves which are appearing in the books of the vendor company preserve the identity. It means we will have to create what we call similar sort of reserves. Correct? Similarly, we have in this particular case profit and loss account to the extent of 80,000. We shall write over here 80,000. So, these two reserves, free reserves, we will have to create. Is it clear to you? This is the only difference. So, we have taken over assets, we have taken over liabilities and besides that, we have created reserves similar to the one which were appearing in the books of vendor company. Now we will write here to business purchase, business purchase, that is 3,60,000, 3,60,000, 3,60,000. Now in this particular case, this total is actually 5 lakh and this total is 1 lakh 40, liability total is 140 or what you, what you do simply, you first total of this, let me total it up, it will be equal to 1, 1 lakh plus 40, that is 140 plus 180 and plus 360. Now total of this side, credit side is equal to 680, whereas total of this particular side is just 5 lakh. So whatever difference we will get under the case of merger, I told you, accounting standard states that any loss, any loss in case of merger will be debited to either general reserve or profit or loss account. So, I will simply write profit or loss account. I could have written here general reserve also. Correct? So, whatever balancing figure will appear, whether it appears towards the debit side or towards the credit side, suppose the balancing figure would have had appeared towards the credit side, still I would have had written profit and loss account or general reserve. That is the basic difference between the entries under merger and what we call under purchase. I hope that now it has become clearer to you. Is it clear to you or not? Fine. Now, 
we will pay to the liquidator as we normally pay so i will write the next entry liquidator account debit now liquidator of vendor company liquidator of vendor company is supposed to be paid 360000 so we are supposed to pay him 360000 correct and in order to pay 360000 this time how many shares we are offering because purchasing company will have to mention in its books share capital purchasing company is offering actually 12000 shares and purchasing company will write the amount with the face value that is 1 lakh 20000 1 lakh 20000 is it clear to you and then we will write here two security premium two security premium two security premium now security premium will be equal to 12000 into 20 because one share is being issued at the rate of 30 so face value is 10 issue price is 30 premium will be 20 so 2 lakh 40 thousand generally generally when the question is asked from intrinsic value of shares method intrinsic value of shares method not only entries are asked not only entries are asked but also balance sheet generally you will be asked under intrinsic value of share computation of what we call purchase consideration obviously besides that in the books of purchasing company accounting aspects shall be asked you you will be supposed to pass the entries and prepare the balance sheet correct so suppose if in this particular question i have to prepare the balance sheet how i am going to prepare it just pay attention in order to i will prepare the balance sheet here itself balance sheet now, what is the basic rule of preparing the balance sheet? The basic rule is that all you have to do while preparing the balance sheet, all you have to do is look into the column of purchasing company. You will have to just watch out the column of purchasing company. Number one. And number two, the entries which you have written in the books of purchasing company. That means while preparing the balance sheet, you need not require to look at the column of vendor company. Is it clear to you or not? So on the basis of these rules, I am going to prepare the balance sheet in this particular question. For example, first of all, let me write here one, equity and liability. As we know, nowadays we write equity and liability first. And then under it, we write one, share capital or sorry, share, shareholders fund shareholders fund has shareholders fund have two subheadings one is share capital and another one is actually reserve and surplus first let me actually write shareholders fund correct under the shareholder fund i will write share capital now what will be the amount of share capital first look into as i told you while framing the balance sheet you have to do only or do what we call your accounting on the basis of these two steps first of all look into the column of purchasing company i look into the column of purchasing company you can see k limited is having equity share capital of four lakh you simply put it up over here four lakh equity share capital four lakh correct so equity share capital is four lakh number one now look into the entries which you have just passed Look into the entries which you have just passed. <laughs> this mouse sometimes creates problem. Well, now I will look into the balance sheet, into the entries. Now in the entries, because only three entries we have written. I am trying to find out whether I have written anywhere share capital. Yes, here I have written share capital in entry number 3. And this share capital is credited because purchasing company has issued share capital to discharge the purchase consideration. So, 1,20,000 you are going to add here. So, that means total share capital issued by purchasing company now stands at rupees six lakh sorry five lakh twenty thousand this is how you will have to prepare the balance sheet now next item is reserve and surplus 
reserves and surplus. Under reserves and surplus, first we will look into the column of the purchasing company. I look into the column of the purchasing company, I find general reserve is appearing over there to the extent of 5 lakh, fine. Now, after having a look over the column of what we call purchasing company, now we will have a look over the entries. In the entry, what I am trying to figure out, whether I have written anywhere general reserve. Yes, in entry number 2, this time you have written general reserve and you have written general reserve because this is a case of merger. So, you had to cre create what we call similar sort of general reserve which were appearing in the books of vendor company. Because here you have created a general reserve of 1 lakh. So, now general reserve balance will be equal to 6 lakh. Is it clear to you or not? General reserve balance will be equal to 6 lakh. Similarly, I look into the column of purchasing company once again and profit and loss account is written over there 3 lakh. Now again, I will look into the entries which I have just written over here. In the entry, I first of all, I will notice that I have credited profit and loss account, but at the same time, we have debited profit and loss account also by 180. So, first I will write, first I will add the amount which I have credited, 80,000, and then I will subtract because 180,000 worth of PNL we have debited also. So, PNL balance will be equal to 2 lakhs. Will be equal to 2 lakhs. Then, after reserve in surplus, the next heading is non current liability. Correct? First heading is shareholders fund, then non current liability. Under non current liability, purchasing company is having debentures. Purchasing company is having debentures 3,60,000. And there is nothing to add because vendor company is not having any debentures, correct? So, automatically in the balance sheet only 3,60,000 will appear. Then, besides debenture, next item is creditors. As far as creditors are concerned, purchasing company is having creditors worth rupees 2 lakh. Again, you will look into the entries because you have written here creditors, so you are going to add it, correct? Because you have taken over the creditors of vendor company. So, vendor company's creditor is equal to 1 lakh. In the outer column, you will write 3 lakh. And then we have in this case, bills payable. And if you look into the bills payable, purchasing company is having 50,000. And we have taken over bills payable of vendor company 40,000. So, total will be equal to 90,000. So now you must have noticed that we have completed all the items of purchasing company as far as concerned in the balance sheet. But that doesn't mean that your balance sheet is completely done. No. Still you have to make a check. What sort of check? You can see in the books of purchasing company when you wrote the entry, you wrote actually three entry. Now as far as business purchase is concerned, no treatment of business purchase has been done in the balance sheet. Reason being is that because business purchase account, here it is getting debited, but here it is getting credited. So, that means business purchase account is automatically closed. Correct? Similarly, liquidator account is getting credited, but also it is getting debited in entry number 3. So, liquidator account is also closed. And then, property, plant and equipment we have finished only liability sites. We haven't done asset side still, sorry. So far, we have taken into account, I haven't written here current liabilities. So, as far as liability side is concerned, it is not yet over, but we have done up with the all the items. But now, we are moving over to asset side. As far as asset side is concerned, under asset, first of all, I am going to write non-current asset. Non-current asset. Under non-current asset, we write first property, plant and equipment. Now, property, plant and equipment of purchasing company is 7 lakh. And 
of vendor company is 3 lakh because vendor company's property plant and equipment we have taken over so that is the reason it will be equal to 10 lakh under non current asset we also write investments and when we write investment under non current asset it means these investments are of non current nature as far as investments are concerned only purchasing companies having investment that is 5 lakh Besides, we have been given current assets. Current asset purchasing company is having 6 lakh worth of current asset and 2 lakh worth of current assets of vendor company have been taken over. So, I will write here 8 lakh. So, that is how we will prepare the balance sheet. But still, the balance sheet is not completed. Remember one thing. So, first of all, each and every item of liability side and of asset side of purchasing company, you will note. And its corresponding item in the entry you will note. Simply add them and you are going to put them in the balance sheet. Now again check the entries. As I was telling to you that business purchase account will automatically get closed. Correct. Similarly liquidator account will also get automatically closed. So that is the reason actually it will not appear in the balance sheet. Property plant and equipment in the entry which you have written you have adjusted it in the balance sheet. Similarly current assets you have adjusted in the balance sheet. Similarly, profit and loss account which you have written over here, you have adjusted in the balance sheet. Creditors are also adjusted. Bills paper are also adjusted. Journal reserve, profit and loss account are also adjusted. Business purchases also adjusted. So, no problem. Liquidator account will automatically get closed. Share capital which we issued 120 is also adjusted. But no adjustment has been done with respect to security premium. That is why and security premium is just credited. So, it is not yet closed. So, it must appear in the balance sheet. That is the point I am trying to tell you that first look into the column of purchasing company, compare it with all the items which you have written in the uh, purchasing company's books and after that must make a check because it could be a possibility that some item might have not yet get closed. So, that item must be put into the balance sheet. The security premium is generally written under security premium it is written under reserves and surplus. So, now your balance sheet will be completed. 2,40,000. So, this is the entire concept of intrinsic value of share. I hope, correct, uh, you must have got a fair bit of idea now regarding intrinsic value of share. It's a pretty interesting one. And now, we will move over to the other part. Although I have explained it in such a manner that it should not pose you any difficulty, but still. Question number 4.2 is the next on the card. Sometime. Okay. We have done so far 4.1 only. So now we will pick up 4.2. 4.2. What is given in 4.2? The following is the balance sheet of 1 and 2 limited. 1 and 2 limited balance sheet is given to you. In this particular balance sheet, it is given to you property, plant and equipment 1,40,075,000, inventories 42,047,000, trade daters 30,000, 50,000 and bank balance 80,000 and 10,000. Further, you are given share capital 150, 120, 95 and 10,000, then 10% 10 debentures only of two companies, only of company two. One company is having trade creditor, two companies having 32,000 worth of creditors. One limited is absorbing, one limited agree to absorb, two limited on the above date on the following terms. What are the terms? One limited will revalue, revalue property, revalue its property, plant and equipment at 1,95,000. Now, 
property plant and equipment which is appearing in the books at 140000 has been revalued at 195000 195000 correct further it is also given that shares of both the companies to be valued now this particular line is sufficient hint for you that you have to actually adopt intrinsic value of shares approach shares of both the company to be valued on net assets basis i have already told you indirectly it means intrinsic value of share basis after considering 50000 towards the value towards value of goodwill of two limited as we know that intrinsic value of shares is determined by taking into account what we call all the assets and liabilities so question is telling that we have determined intrinsic value of share by considering the fact that two limited is having a goodwill worth rupees 50000 is it clear to you and then further it is written that cost of absorption 3000 is met by one limited met by one limited one limited is purchasing company so in this question first of all you are supposed to find out the intrinsic value of shares if you are going to find out the intrinsic value of shares how you are going to find out the question is this it is very simple your first step let's have a look over here calculation of net assets and intrinsic value of share under the first step as i have already told you first of all i am going to write down assets and liabilities of both the companies this is one limited this is two limited one limited and two limited it is important when you are going to compute the net assets it is important that you must not forget to write the goodwill of two limited because it is very specifically given in the question that in order to value the goodwill in order to sorry value the shares we are considering that two limited is having a goodwill to the extent of fifty thousand then you will write property plant and equipment remember one thing one limited which is the purchasing company its value of property plant and equipment which is given in the balance sheet as one lakh forty thousand correct here now it is one lakh ninety five thousand so you will write here one lakh ninety five although two limited is having what we call property plant and equipment at seventy five thousand itself you can see no revised value is given so we have taken in rest of the items you will take it as it is so you will write what we call inventory is 42 47 daters 30000 50000 bank balance and then you will have the total 347 and 232000 then you will subtract the liability there are two liability in this question debentures however one limited is not having any debenture in the question so 20000 you will subtract uh, you will write over here and then trade creditors 47,000 in this column and 32,000 in this column. Now you will subtract 47 from 347 and you will get net assets. Net asset is also known as capital employed or it is also known as assets available for shareholder as I told you earlier. So that means the net asset is 3 lakh and 1 lakh 80,000. There is no preference share capital in the question. Had it been there, I would have had subtracted it. So it means assets available for equity share is equal to 3 lakh and 1 lakh 80,000. Now I will divide it by the number of shares. Now we will look into the balance sheet to find out number of share. 1 lakh 50,000 divided by 10. So 1 limited is having 15,000 worth of share. While 2 limited is having 1 lakh 20 divided by 10. Actually we may say 12,000 worth of shares. So in this particular case, 15,000 and 12,000 number of shares. So you will get the intrinsic value of share 20 and 15. Now you must also be alert that net assets of this particular company is nothing but your purchase consideration. Purchase consideration you have already determined. However, I have written over here purchase consideration that is net assets of vendor company that is too limited is equal to 180,000. Now the next question as I told you earlier, how many number of shares you are going to issue? Number of share to be issued by purchasing company on the basis of its intrinsic value of share. For that you will have to take into account the amount of purchase consideration and you will have to divide it by intrinsic value of share of purchasing company. So 1,80,000 divided by intrinsic value of share of purchasing company, you come to know that 9,000 shares you are going to issue. And 9,000 shares means 9,000 shares of 10 each you are going to issue at 20. As I told you earlier, if you want to show the ratio of exchange, although it is not needed unless it is asked, 
you are issuing 9000 share to the 12000 shareholders of vendor company because vendor company is having 12000 shares and you are offering only 9000 shares so if i if we are going to compute the ratio it will be equal to 3 is to 4 that means for every four shares of vendor company you are offering only three shares you are offering only three share because total value of four share if i will take the intrinsic value of purchasing a vendor company that is 15 it comes to 60 and our intrinsic value is 23 into 20 is 60 so it is not an injustifiable rather it is a very justifiable way of finding that how many shares we have to issue you so are you getting my point or not so if it is clear then we are we in this particular question are offering them only what we call 12 sorry 9000 shares although i have already told you that while preparing the ledgers in the books of the vendor company hardly there is anything to do first of all you will write all the items of the balance sheet in the balance sheet only fixed asset stock trade creator and bank is given all the assets are being taken over so 182000 is the total worth of assets there are two liabilities, 20,000 debentures, trade creditor, that is 52,000 worth of liability. Correct? Then you will write here by, and in fact, in the question, share capital is 1,20,000, there are reserves also 10,000. 10, and after having posted all the items of assets and liability, then you will write purchasing company account 1,80,000. Of course, this purchasing company account ultimately will come to the debit of the shareholders account, correct? Because we are going to receive the shares only. Now, there is no liability and expenses. So that is why I have written here two bank liability and expenses nil. Then now we will compute the amount of profit, which is equal to 50,000. Correct? This 50,000 you are going to transfer here and ultimately your shareholder account will get closed. Now you let me know when you will move into the purchasing company's books, correct? Could you tell me in this case how uh, what will be the case whether it is a case of merger or whether it is a case of what we call purchase first question are all assets and liabilities being taken over so in this question all assets and liabilities are being taken over right any revised values are given any revised values are given or not so revised value of purchasing company is given Although revised value of purchasing company is given, that is not going to make any effect. Point is that are assets and liabilities being taken over at book value? Logically, the answer is yes. But problem is that in this particular case, I would not say all the assets and liabilities are being taken over at book value because in this particular case, we have done the valuation of goodwill of what we call vendor company. For valuing the share, we have considered the fact that vendor company is having a goodwill of 50,000. So, it means actually in case of merger, no new asset can arrive. So, that is the reason in this case an asset is arising. So, that is the reason it will be a case of purchase. Correct? So, if it is a case of purchase, in the books of purchasing company, you will write your first entry. Business purchase account debit to liquidator 1,80,000, 1,80,000 because at this amount you have purchased the asset. Then all the assets which you have taken over, for example, you have taken over goodwill. In fact, you haven't taken over goodwill, but ultimately you will take it. 1,82,000 worth of assets you have taken over. Goodwill will become your balancing figure automatically, correct? The total of all the asset is 1,80,000. You can show them separately or you can write direct column then two liabilities the total of two liabilities which you took over is equal to 52 business purchase is 180 so ultimately goodwill will come at 50,000 correct then you will pay to the liquidator 1,80,000 9,000 shares of 10 each 90,000 security premium account 9,000 purchasing company is also bearing the expense and I told you whatever expense purchasing company will pay in case of purchase will be debited to goodwill that is why your entry will be goodwill account debit to bank correct in this question they haven't asked any balance sheet but they have asked actually to prepare the bank account to prepare the bank account now if we are going to prepare the bank account in this particular case how i am going to prepare first of all in the bank account i will write our balance our balance means purchasing company's balance 
and we have taken their bank also so we will write here two vendor that is 10,000 so their bank account so total available balance is 90,000 out of that 3,000 worth of expenses we have just borne and balancing figure will be 87,000 is it clear to you or not is it clear absolutely clear although balance sheet is not needed in this particular question but still suppose suppose if you would have prepared the balance sheet how you would have prepared first you let me know what amount of share capital you would have written sir first of all we would have looked into the balance sheet of what we call one limited right so you will write share capital that is one lakh fifty thousand and then you will look into the entries which you have passed in the entry you have written share capital 90,000 because you have issued 9,000 shares of rupees 10 each because you have issued those shares at a premium now you can straight away put it under reserves and surplus already in advance because you have issued shares at a premium 9,000 shares correct have been issued at a premium of 10 so 90,000 in security premium will also find place in the balance sheet when you will prepare the balance sheet then next item is reserve next item is actually reserves reserves will find place under reserves and surplus total is 95,000 but this time it will be only 95,000 because you are not taking over the reserves you are not taking over the reserves are too limited moreover you cannot take it further you are not creating what we call reserve in your own book similar to this one because it is a case of purchase is it clear to you or not because in the entry we have seen actually three entries so nowhere we have written reserves so only 95,000 will come correct next item is debentures although non-current liability although in this particular case purchasing company is not having debentures but you have taken over the debentures of vendor company 20,000 so total amount in the outer column will be 20,000 similarly trade creditors current liability as far as trade creditors are concerned 47,000 your, your company is having and you took over vendor companies creditors so you will write here 79,000 correct this is how you are going to prepare the balance sheet this is your liability side and it will be equal to 2 lakh 40,000 this is your liability side now coming over to the asset side as far as assets are concerned as far as assets are concerned correct first of all i will write property plant and equipment now as far as property plant and equipment are concerned one lakh forty thousand now here you could commit or anyone can commit a mistake because we may be tempted to think that revised value of purchasing company is 1,95,000. So we should write 1,95,000. No. While preparing the balance sheet, purchasing company's items will figure only at carrying amount irrespective of the fact whether any revised values are given or not. Is it clear to you? So I will not write 1,95,000. I will still write 1,40,000. And we have taken over their property, plant and equipment at 75,000. So this will be your, what we call 215, I think so, total. Then similarly, inventories. Inventories you will simply add 42,000. You are having inventory and 47,000 worth of inventory you have taken over. So 89,000. Is it clear to you? Similarly, trade daters, you are going to write as far as trade daters are concerned, 30,000 your company is having and 50,000 worth of daters you have taken over, so 80,000. Clear? And bank balance, we have already prepared the bank account. And in fact, you can show it directly also here, 80,000, vendor companies 10,000. And then you are going to subtract 3,000 worth of expenses. So that will be equal to 87,000. Now, for a while we may think that balance sheet is over because we have already written security premium but in the you must make a check of your entries when you will check your entry you will find that goodwill account is, is still not closed so that is the reason when you will write here asset under non-current asset word goodwill will also come here the amount of goodwill 
actually is 50,000 and plus 3,000. In entry number 2, difference 50,000 goodwill and because and because of expenses, again 3,000 loss we will incur. So, total amount of goodwill in the balance sheet will be equal to 53,000. So, this is how your balance sheet will be prepared. Is it clear to you as far as this question is concerned? There is only one more question in this particular section and this is similar to the question which we have done. You can easily manage 4.3. Is it clear to you? Detailed answers have been given so no, so you will not have any problem. Clear? Still I will explain this question so that you should not have any problem. In this question we have been given there are two companies Thumb and Finger Limited factory building. Goodwill is already given in the balance sheet, daters, stock, cash at bank. Preliminary expenses are not assets, correct? So for computing valuation of shares, don't take preliminary expenses. And similarly, we have share capital. Share capital actually is 5,40,000 and 4,3,300. General reserve is 1,1,065. Profit and loss account is 66,043,500. And sundry creditors, 44,458,200. Below, the question states that goodwill of thumb and finger limited to be valued at 75 and 50,000. So, first of all, you will have to write goodwill. Now, amount of goodwill which is given to you is uh, 75,000 and 50,000. So, you will consider goodwill at this value when you will compute the what we call intrinsic value of shares. The stock of finger limited has been shown at 10% above cost. The stock of finger limited. This line is related with the stock of finger limited. And what does it mean? It means if purchase price, let us say is 100, then my recorded price is 110. 10% above cost. Indirectly, it means this stock which is being reflected over here actually is being shown at 10% above cost. So, we will have to bring it to its true value. So, if recorded price is 110, then proper price, proper purchase price is 100. Similarly, if recorded price is 82,500, what will be the proper purchase price? This is how you will have to find out. 82,500 into 100 divided by 110. And this will give you, this will give you 82,500 into 100 divided by 110, 75,000. That means you will consider a stock when you will do the valuation, you will write here stock. See, this particular stock will come at 91,500. Only information was related to this particular stock and this will now figure at 75,000. Is it clear to you? And it was decided that Thumb Limited shall absorb finger limited by taking over its entire business by issue of shares at intrinsic value. I told you in case of intrinsic value of shares. So, when you will compute, so you will compute your intrinsic value of share in this manner, that is you will consider factory building at 2,10,000, 1,60,000 and then you will write the amount of goodwill 75 and 50, then you will write here daters, amount of daters is equal to 286, 900 zero zero and 172900. Then stock you will consider at this value and finally cash at bank that is 98,000 and 109,590. 109,590. Then you will subtract the liabilities. In this case, there is only one liability 44,400 and 58,200. Then you will get the net assets. Correct? Net assets, because no preference share capital is there, this net asset will also be equal to assets available for equity shares. 
then you divide it by the number of share 54,000 and 40,330. 40, so what will be your amount of net assets I have already given you here? It will be equal to 7,2000 and it will be equal to 524290. Correct? And interest, interestingly, as I told you, when you are going to divide it by number of share 54,000 and number of share 40,330, problem is that in this case, your intrinsic value will be same, 13, 13. Correct? So your purchase consideration will be equal to this much, 5,24,290. And how many shares you are going to issue them? All you have to do, 524290, you will have to divide it by the intrinsic value of your company. So that means you are going to offer 40,330 shares. Of course, off rupees 10 each at the rate of 30. So now uh, everything I have told you, preliminary expense of finger limited, when you will do the accounting in the books of vendor company will be debited to shareholders account, correct? So these are the things which are given. So you can easily manage this particular section now. And then in the next section, we'll come back to section three. So that's enough. As far as this particular section is concerned, we shall meet you in the next one. So welcome again to this particular session. We are picking up now 3.2 and this is related to net assets method, net payment method, sorry. Correct. So net payment method of purchase consideration. This is the question now which we are going to pick up. And we have already seen actually net assets method. We have already seen intrinsic value of shares. So now only method left is net payment method. So when to use net payment method? Quite obviously when information related to net assets method and what we call intrinsic value method is not available in the question, quite obviously, then in that particular case, we would be left off with only one alternative to use net payment method, correct? So under net payment method, what exactly will be the methodology and how we are going to compute the purchase consideration? All these questions will be dealt at great length. Let's have a look over 3.2. Rashi Limited here is agreeing to acquire the business of Dhanu Limited as on 31st of 3, 2022 and the balance sheet of Dhanu Limited is as follows. In the balance sheet, as you can see, you have been given share capital and general reserve and profit and loss account are free reserves. Obviously, free reserves are posted to the shareholders account credit side. The statutory reserve is export profit reserve. Export profit reserve is statutory reserve and it will also be posted to the credit side of shareholders account. Then we have got in this particular case 9% debentures. Creditors, there are two liabilities only, 9% debentures and creditor. Acceptances and staff provident fund, I have written but no values are there, only two liabilities. Besides that, you have got in this particular case property, plant and equipment in the form of tangible property, plant and equipment, 30 lakh. Then intangible asset goodwill also is appearing there. Preliminary expenses are not assets. They will be posted to the debit side of what we call shareholders account. Then we have got a stock, debtors and cash at bank. Now below it is given in the question that consideration, consideration a cash payment equal to 2.50 for every share in Dhanu Limited. Rashi Limited has agreed to pay this time purchase consideration in this manner. Sometime actually purchasing company enters into an agreement with the vendor company that the amount of purchase consideration will be some total of all the payments which we are going to make to you. For example, in this case, purchasing company will pay 2.50 for every share in Dhanu Limited. For every share in Dhanu Limited. That means if you are the shareholder of vendor company and if you are having one share, each shareholder will be, sorry, we will pay you 2.5 for every share. So if you are having one share, then company will pay to you 2.50 in cash. Correct? This is the first agreement. Then as far as second agreement is concerned, as per this particular point, the issue of 4,50,000 equity shares of 10 each fully paid in Rashi Limited having an agreed value of 15 per share. 
having an aggregate value of 15 per share. Now, in this case, purchasing company is telling that we are going to give you 4,50,000 shares. Correct? We will pay you 4,50,000 shares of 10 each and we are going to pay these shares which are having a face value of 10 but we are going to issue these shares to you at the rate of 15. Correct? Further, it is also given in the question that Rashi Limited also agreed to discharge 9% debentures of Dhanu Limited at a premium of 20% by allotment, by allotment of 8% of its debenture at 96%. Tough line. Tough line. And what does this particular line would mean? I will explain it in a short while. But before that, you need to understand, at least you can infer out of it, that this time Rashi Limited is making some payment to the debenture holders of vendor company, whereas the first two payments are meant for shareholders of the vendor company. So in case of net payment method, we will see that purchasing company is making some payment to the different parties of the vendor company. So these lines will be enough clue for you that you have to actually use the net payment method, correct? Further, it is given in the question that directors of Rashi Limited will take over the tangible fixed asset at 100% more than the book value. Tangible fixed asset have been taken over at 100% more, that means at 60 lakh, we may say, correct? Whereas stock is valued at 7 lakh 10,000, stock has been valued at 7 lakh 10,000. And further, debtors add their face value subject to a provision of 5% for doubtful debts. That means we have taken over debtors less 5% provision. At this value, purchasing company will take over these assets. Further, it is written that cost of liquidation of Dhanu Limited came to 75,000. The cost of liquidation of Dhanu Limited is 75,000. But 50,000 were borne by Rashi Limited, that is purchasing company. It means... 25,000 must have been borne by purchasing company, by vendor company, correct? Out of 75, 50,000 is being borne by purchasing company and 25,000 must have been borne by vendor company. Further, it is given that statutory reserve to be maintained for one more year. Statutory reserve, this is your statutory reserve. Generally, purchasing company never takes over and in fact, purchasing company can never ever take any reserve. I have told it so many times. However, in case of amalgamation in the nature of merger, if it would have been a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger, although it is not a case of amalgamation in the nature of merger, it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase. We will see later on. But even if this particular case would have been for a while, presuming that a case of merger, in that particular case, purchasing company will create, as I have told you, that reserves similar to the reserves appearing in the vendor company's books. That means in the purchase in the books of purchasing company we will create general reserve, export profit reserve and profit and loss account. That means whenever in the question this particular line is given that is statutory reserve to be maintained for one more year, it has got no relevance if the case is of merger. Because in the merger all the reserves are created by purchasing company. However, it is a case of purchase because revised values are being given, correct? So it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase and generally in case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase, we never create any reserves similar to the vendor company's reserve. But, but if question states uh, such information as is given in this question that is statutory reserves to be maintained for one more year, in that case, purchasing company will have to create in its books statutory reserves, correct? So that is the only point. But when purchasing company will create the statutory reserve, purchasing company later on, I will tell you, will pass the entry amalgamation adjustment account debit to statutory reserve. Why this entry is passed, I will explain it. But let me explain as far as net payment method is concerned. Because first of all, you need to understand this question quite well, then only things will become clearer to you. So, no need of this now. So, these are the items. Let me have a look, closer look once again. And this is the information given to you. So, now I am going to, first of all, compute the amount of purchase consideration by applying 
नेट पेमेंट मेथड करेक्ट दिस इज योर थ्री पॉइंट टू क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री पॉइंट टू एंड अंडर दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन माय फर्स्ट स्टेप विल बी फर्स्ट स्टेप विल बी कंप्यूटेशन ऑफ परचेज कंसिडरेशन आई एम गोइंग टू कंप्यूट परचेज कंसिडरेशन computation of purchase consideration in order to compute the purchase consideration we have to ask under net payment method we have to ask ourselves three question correct which party when i say when i would say party it means i am referring to what we call party of what we call shareholder and by party i mean whether equity shareholder preference shareholder debenture holder creditors so we will have to ask which party is receiving the payment name of the party which is receiving the payment correct that when we have to ask ourselves three question which party is receiving the payment obviously what is the amount of payment amount of payment and then finally in what form they are receiving the payment whether they are whether a particular party is receiving the payment in cash or in preference share or by way of debenture or by way of bonds so these three questions we have to ask which party is receiving the payment how much payment they are receiving and in what form they are receiving the payment under net payment method so first of all i will write here when i will go through please op keep in front of you the question sheets for example i have kept a question sheet before me correct only question sheet not solution sheet it is not possible to have these solution sheets now if we will go through the first line it is written that cash payment equal to cash payment equal to 2.50 for every share for every share at least through this particular line you can infer you can conclude that payment is being received by the shareholder when we will look into the balance sheet of what we call this particular company in the balance sheet we have share capital correct so first of all i will look into the share capital total share capital is 30 lakh and one share is 10 each so total number of share is equal to total number of share is equal to 3 lakh so i will write here first of all this payment is being received by the shareholders this payment is being received by shareholder now the question is how much first of all you consider the fact that how many number of shares are there in order to find that look into the share capital that is 30 lakh and face value given in the question is 10 so 30 lakh divided by 10 will be equal to 3 lakh so total number of share is equal to 3 lakh for every share for divided by 1 for every one share purchasing company is giving 2.50 in cash is it clear to you for every one share purchasing company is delivering 2.50 in cash so what will be the amount 3 lakh 3 lakh divided by 1 into 2.50 that is equal to 7 lakh 50 so total amount of payment is equal to 7 lakh 50000 no doubt about that this is the total payment now we have to ask another question in what form they are receiving the payment they are receiving the payment in cash in cash now next line states that purchasing company is issuing 4 lakh 50000 share how many share 4 lakh 50000 shares 4 lakh 50000 share per it is given in the question that issue of 4 lakh 50000 equity shares of 10 each of course these shares will be issued to the shareholders only so 4 lakh 50000 share total number of share of vendor company is equal to 3 lakh total number of share of vendor company is equal to 3 lakh and we are issuing how many share purchasing company is issuing 4 lakh 50000 share if i will compute the ratio the ratio first of all i will 40 40 cancel 30 plus 45 so this is the ratio we can shorten it also 2 and 3 that mean we can say that purchasing company is offering 3 shares 
for every two shares of vendor company if you are the shareholder of vendor company and if you are having two share purchasing company will offer you three share that is what we mean by that purchasing company will issue 4 lakh 50 thousand shares total number of share is 3 lakh we have already seen and again the payment is being received by the shareholder no doubt now just a moment ago i told you that purchasing company will offer three share how many share purchasing company will issue three multiply it with three for every two share for every two share now if you will compute this it will be equal to four lakh fifty thousand only and these shares are being issued at the rate of 50 so you multiply it with 50 that means there was there is no need for you to do this sort of things just to make you understand that every two share is getting three share you could have simply multiplied 4 lakh 50 with 50 correct so 4 lakh 50 thousand into 15 is equal to 67 lakh 50 thousand 67 lakh 50 thousand 67 lakh 50 thousand this is the amount again being received by the shareholder and of course this time the payment is by way of shares correct suppose if i total it up what value i get 67 lakh 50 plus 7 lakh 50 thousand that is equal to 75 lakhs so 75 lakh right now at this moment is the total 75 lakh correct now now in the next line payment is being given to the debenture holders debenture holder now the party is debenture holders now if you look into the balance sheet in fact into the third information in the additional information rashi limited also agree to discharge the nine percent debentures of dhanu limited dhanu limited at a premium of 20 percent at a premium of 20 percent first of all i will look into the balance sheet i will try to find out what is the amount of debenture if you look into the question sheet it is clearly mentioned over here that debentures of dhanu limited is equal to five lakh correct is equal to five lakh so i will write the amount of debenture 5 lakh total amount of debenture is equal to 5 lakh as per the agreement now look into the additional information in the additional information it is given that rashi limited agree to discharge 8 9% debenture these are 9% debenture of dhanu limited at a premium of 20% so we have to pay them 20% premium also so i will add 20% to 5 lakh that becomes 6 lakh that means total payment given to debenture holder is equal to 6 lakh. No doubt about it. And it is given that director of Rashi Limited also agreed to discharge the 9% of Dhanu Limited at a premium of 20% by allotting them, allotting them 8% debentures. So that means this payment is being given by way of issue of debentures. Purchasing company will discharge the claims of the debentures by issuing them their own debenture of what we call 8% interest. Is it clear to you? So debenture holder of Dhanu Limited are 5 lakh. These debentures are supposed to be paid at 20% premium. So total amount is 6 lakh. So in order to discharge 6 lakh worth of debenture, purchasing company will issue its 8% debentures. Number one. But the question also states that Purchasing company will issue its debenture at 96%. At 96% means purchasing company will issue its debenture at what we call discount. If I want to know how many debenture purchasing company will issue to discharge 6 lakh worth of payment, you can find it out also. You can find it out in this manner. Total payment is to be made 6 lakh and purchasing company will issue its debentures at 96 at 96 so if i am going to divide 6 lakh 6 lakh divide by 96 that is equal to 6250 that means purchasing company will issue 6250 debentures of rupees 100 each of rupees 100 each at the rate of 96 
at the rate of 96. This is the point which you need to understand. Is it clear to you? Now, so we have now noted down all the parties as per the question which are receiving payments. So, in the first three lines, it is written clearly that which are the parties which are receiving the payment. Now, very important, under net payment method, under net payment method, only payment received by the shareholder, whether equity or preference, in this question only shareholder is given, only payment accruing to shareholder will be considered for the computation of computing the purchase consideration. That means your purchase consideration will be considered as 75 lakh. Is it clear to you? This is the first major point. Second major point is, what about the payment received by the party other than the shareholder? So you need to understand that under net payment method, under net payment method, under net payment method, Under net payment method, it is very important to know. Under net payment method, payments received by shareholders only will be considered. Correct? Payments. Received or given to shareholders shall be considered for shall be considered for computation of purchase consideration shall be considered for PC okay that means for computing purchase consideration only payment received or given to shareholder will be considered. Indirectly, it means payment received by other parties will not be considered. So, indirectly, it means, it means payments received by parties other than the shareholders, by parties other than the shareholders. Now, parties other than these shareholders means, means like debentures, creditors, bills payable, it could be any party. In this question, there are, there are debentures. So, payment received by parties other than shareholders number one shall not be, obviously, shall not be considered for Computing purchase consideration shall not be considered, shall not be considered for PC, number one. And number two, very important, it will now be presumed, now you will presume, it will now be presumed that such liabilities or such parties have been taken over, have been taken over by purchasing company. If a particular party or liability is being taken over by a purchasing company, the vendor company will not pay to that particular party. So that is what we mean by that. Now you, we will presume that this liability has been taken over by purchasing company and purchasing company will pay them later on or instantly as per the given information. Is it clear to you? So this is the point which you need to keep in mind that under net payment method, only payment received by equity and preference shareholder will constitute the amount of purchase consideration, number one. And if a, if a party other than these shareholders like debentures, creditor, bills payable, if they receive any payment, those payments will not be considered for computing purchase consideration. However, we will presume now such liabilities have been taken over. 
is it clear to you or not yes right sir so it is clear and now we can proceed as far as this particular question is concerned let me have a look once again equity share capital general reserve export profit surplus profit and loss debentures and creditors two liabilities are given and then in the asset side we have goodwill and tangible asset and then stock and this cash and bank and nothing is mentioned in this particular question which are the assets which are being taken over and which are the liabilities being taken over it is not mentioned in this particular question very clearly it is not mentioned see actually don't get confused by this particular line rashi limited will take over tangible fixed asset at 100 percent and all this is just with respect to some assets which are being taken over at different values however in this question nothing is mentioned which liability has been taken over and which is not taken over so in this particular question we shall presume that all the assets and liabilities have been taken over is it clear to you or not so first of all as usual because this is first question of debt payment method so we shall prepare in the books of vendor company this is your step number whatever it is step number two second step books of vendor company in the books of vendor company now you are going to prepare all those relevant account correct purchasing company account i will prepare purchasing company account then i will prepare realization account i think this is more than sufficient realization account Besides realization account, we will prepare cash account and shareholders account. I will prepare shareholders account here itself. Correct? Shareholders account. And then we are going to prepare your cash bank account. This is your realization account. So in the realization account, we will look into the first of all question. And question starts with equity and liability. So okay, let us also start with this particular side. Equity share capital 30 lakh is given. So I will post equity share capital towards the credit side. That is 30 lakhs. Correct. And then we have in this case general reserve. General reserve is equal to 50,000. We have profit and loss account. Profit and loss account is equal to 5,50,000. And then we have export profit EPR, export profit reserve. It is also posted to this account 8,50,000. And then we have in this case two liabilities, 8% debentures and creditors. Sorry, 9% debentures and creditors. 9% debentures, 5 lakh, 50,000, 5 lakh. We'll post it to the credit side of realization account. Then creditors you have in this particular case. Because in the question nothing is mentioned, so we shall presume that both the liabilities are being taken over. Suppose if in this particular question it would have been given that 9% debentures were not taken over. Suppose if it would have been given. But because debentures are receiving some payment, so you would have had still presumed that debentures are being taken over. That is the relevancy of those lines that such liability now it will be presumed are being taken over. That means even if the question would have stated that debentures haven't been taken over, but because that party is receiving the payment, so you will presume that, that that particular liability has been taken over. Now we move to the asset side. In the asset side, we have 
property pro property plant and equipment tangible that is 30 lakhs in realization we always write the book value and then we have in this case in this case goodwill intangible asset goodwill 5 lakh will also be written Besides goodwill, we have preliminary expenses to the extent of 50,000. So preliminary expense I will put to the debit side of shareholders account. And then we have, and then we have stock, daters and cash at bank. All these items will be posted to the debit side of realization account. Amount of stock given is 10,40,000 as you can see in your notes. And similarly, daters. As far as daters are concerned, that is equal to 1,80,000. And cash at bank will also be posted over here because this time all the assets and liabilities have been taken over. 2,80,000. After having posted all the items of liability and assets, the next step is, next step is, we write here by purchasing company, purchase consideration. Purchase consideration we computed was I think 75 lakh or how much was the purchase consideration I have forgotten, 75 lakh. 75 lakh is the amount of purchase consideration. Now we will cross it to the debit side of purchasing company account. We will write here to realization, to realization. Seventy five lakh, and this time the payment which we are receiving seventy five lakh we received seven lakh fifty in cash and we received sixty seven lakh fifty thousand worth of share. So I am going to write here by cash seven lakh fifty thousand, and then shares in purchasing company. Shares in purchasing company sixty seven lakh fifty thousand. Obviously, your this account will get automatically closed. Is it clear to you? Now, whatever cash you have received, you will post it to the debit side of cash account. You will write here to purchasing company. That is equal to seven lakh fifty thousand. Seven lakh fifty thousand. Correct. And then. Shares which you have received will be posted to the debit side of shareholders account. You will write here to purchasing company. You can write in brackets shares. You have received 67,50,000 worth of shares. Correct? In this question, out of these two liability, we need not require to pay any liability because both the liabilities have been taken over. However, question had stated something about liquidation expenses. In the last line, it is written, last but one line, it is written that cost of liquidation of Dhanu Limited amounted to 75,000, out of which 50,000 is borne by Rashi Limited. 75,000, 50,000 was borne by purchasing company, so that means balance you will have to pay to cash. And that is liquidation expenses 25,000. 25,000 worth of liquidation expenses you are going to pay. And then in the cash account, you are going to write by realization account. So that is how you are going to prepare the account as far as this particular question is concerned. Now all you have to do is find out your result, then post the result to the shareholder, and balance of cash will also be posted to the shareholders account. Correct. I do not want to waste time in it. In that, I will come back to the question. I will show you now. Yes, this was the question 3.2. And you can see everything I have explained here very clearly. Equity shareholders are receiving 7,50,000 in cash. I have already explained this point. And 67,50,000 in shares. Deventures are receiving what we call this much of payment. Here we have written 8 lakh 50. The deventures were deventures were actually 5 lakh and not 8 lakh. 
where, what is the amount of debentures. So this calculation is uh, misprinted and that means you will write here 5 lakh plus 20 percent. That will be equal to 6 lakh and in order to pay 6 lakh, how many debentures we compute it? We compute it, just wait, 6 lakh divided by 96. That is equal to 6250 debentures. 6250 debentures of handed each at the rate of 96 we are issuing. Is it clear to you? This is how you are going to do the question. Now, we have already done entire thing. Purchasing company, you must have noticed now in in realization account, goodwill is 5 lakh. In realization account, in this particular question, there was goodwill also. I think I haven't written in the question goodwill. Let me see which was the question. Yes, there is intangible asset goodwill. We have written intangible fixed asset, stock in trade and debtors. All the and this cash at bank will also come towards the debit side of realization account. There are two liabilities which you are going to write here. Correct. Then share capital, we have already posted share capital, export profit surplus, general reserve and profit and loss account. And then first these three items, actually general reserve and profit and loss account, I have taken the combined amount. For example, combined amount means, see here. General is of 50 and profit or loss account 550, so 6 lakh I have posted directly. Otherwise, you may get confused. Now, then we will write here purchasing company account. Purchasing company account is 75 lakh and we paid the expenses. This These expenses will also be written over here. Correct? Then purchasing company will be crossed to purchasing company's debit side and we will receive the payment. We have already explained that particular point. Cash portion will be debited to the cash account and the shares which you have received will be debited to the shareholders account and preliminary expenses are also there. Now I told you all you have to do is to just balance. So your balancing figure will be equal to 30,75,000. This is the point I just wanted to tell you. This amount will be posted over here. Then you are going to Close your cash account 7,25,000. This amount will be posted to the shareholders and ultimately your shareholder account should get closed. Now, in the books of purchasing company, obviously it is a case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase. Your entry first of all will be business purchase account debit to liquidator of Vedda company account. Clear? Then, next entry, we start from here. We have taken over goodwill. We have taken over tangible fixed asset at 60 lakhs. 30 lakh plus 100 percent. In the books of purchasing company, we will record all the assets and liability taken over at revised value, if any. Then stock we have taken over, you will write stock also 1 lakh 80. Daters you have taken over 1 lakh 80 minus 9,000, 5 percent provision, 1 lakh 71. But here, I think you haven't written, let me see one item, which is the question. Uh, 3.2. There is one more item. We have written property, plant and equipment. Okay. 60 lakh. We have written goodwill 5 lakh. Okay. And then stock, right? Stock is not printed here. Even stock is printed. And daters, trade receivable, we haven't written. Trade receivable daters are also written. Cash is not written. So cash, you must also write. Because in this question, cash and bank is also being taken over. Cash and bank will be equal to 2,80,000. When you will write the entry, your entry will be goodwill account debit, tangible fixed asset account debit, stock account debit, daters account 171. Stock has been taken over at 180. Tangible fixed asset have been taken over at 60 lakh, goodwill at 5 lakh. And don't forget to write cash and bank 2,80. Then it is very important when you, will, you have taken over debenture. Now debentures are at 5 lakh, but you are paying them 6 lakh. That means you are taking over the debenture at 6 lakh. So that is why you will write here 6 lakh. At which value, at which value you have taken debenture? You have taken over debenture at 6 lakh. S similarly, creditors, you are taking over at 1 lakh. Then you will write here two business purchase. And whatever difference will be there, 
that difference will be debited because difference is coming to this particular place. So you will write goodwill on absorption. Correct. But check this figure also. Check this figure also. Okay. I will check it for you. 75 lakh plus 1 lakh that is 75 just let me check it out this way 75 lakh plus 1 lakh plus 600 minus minus 280 minus 171 minus 180 minus 600 6000 in fact minus 500 so this amount is actually according to and i haven't subtracted 500 i think actually i think this amount is correct but still you check it correct whatever it, you put it over there whatever balancing figure is there and then your next entry will be liquidator of vendor company you are supposed to pay them 75 lakh which you paid by giving them cash of 7 lakh 50 share capital because you have issued 4,50,000 shares of rupees 10 each, so you are going to write 45 lakh. And these shares have been issued at a premium 4,50,000 into 5. So 22,50,000. Correct. This is how the purchase consideration will be discharged. Very important. In this particular question, the ventures were receiving some payment. And the ventures were receiving payment equal to 6 lakh. That is why in your second entry you have taken, you have written that 9% debentures have been taken over at 6 lakh. Correct? Now you have to pay to these debenture because they are receiving the payment. So you have to make an entry to, dis, uh, to pay the debenture. So I have written here debentures of vendor company 6 lakh. But we are issuing them as we computed earlier 6,250 debentures of 100 each that comes to 6,25,000. But these debentures were issued at a discount of 4%. So if I will compute 4% of this, it will be equal to 25,000 or you can simply multiply 6,250 debenture into 4. Because at the rate of 96 you issued, so 4 will be your discount. This is the entry which you are going to write. Then goodwill account debit to bank account 50,000 you are going to write this entry. Why? Because you are uh, bearing the expenses to the extent of 50,000. And the last point. In this question it was written a statutory reserve to be maintained for two more years. Generally in case of purchase we do not create any reserve from our own side. Only in case of merger it is done. But if question has given this information so we have to follow the instruction. So, this time indirectly we will have to create export profit reserve to the extent of 8,50,000 because export profit surplus is appearing in the books of vendor company at 8,50,000. Is it clear to you? So, that is why your entry will be amalgamation and what, what amount you are going to debit? You will write here amalgamation adjustment account debit 8,50,000. Amalgamation adjustment is also considered as a valueless asset. Correct? It is a sort of suspense account. So, as per AS 14, in case of purchase, if any statutory reserves are to be brought forward, then amalgamation adjustment account will be debited. Is it clear to you? This was the point which you need to, this, was, this is the point which you need to understand. Is it clear? Is it clear? Fine then. If it is clear, then we move over to the next item. Have you computed the amount of this? Okay, I will compute it finally because I will have to rectify my notes also. If there is any misprint, let us say 75 lakh, 75 lakh plus 7 lakh. So total of this is equal to 82 lakh. Total of credit side is equal to 82 lakh, correct? And then I will add all these items. Just wait. 82 lakh. So, 82. Just wait. I do not want to leave the things in evidence. 
yes, this total rectified is equal to 10,69,000. Correct? 10,69,000. Anyway, so it is better to do the things in a correct manner. So 10,69,000 will be your total. Now we take up this particular question. Balance sheet of Darwaja Limited, very interesting name is given to you. So, balance sheet of Darwaja Limited, as far as my memory goes back, way back, although I am not very fond of films, but I saw one movie by the name of Darwaja, very suspenseful and horror movie. Correct? Balance sheet of Darwaja Limited. In this particular balance sheet, there are share capital to the share capital and in the vendor company's book, this time we are facing 13% preference share capital also. Correct? 13% preference share capital is there. And then equity share capital, 8 lakh is there. And if you will look into the balance sheet of this particular question closely, under reserve and surplus, we have capital reserve. We have workmen compensation fund. And workmen compensation fund is 8,000. But in bracket, it is written that 5,000 is liability. So out of 8,000, only 3,000 will be posted to the credit of equity shareholders. Because 5,000 is liability, you will treat it as liability and you will post it to the credit side of realization account. Profit or loss account, obviously you will take to the credit side, to the credit side of equity shareholder account. Then in this case, we have long, we have long term borrowings, 12% debenture that is equal to 2 lakh and interest accrued on debenture is also 12,000. Besides, we have trade creditors. There are, in fact, these three liabilities are there. And besides that, there is another liability in the form of workmen compensation fund liability portion, 5,000. Correct? And then we have lots of items, land and building, plant and machinery, patents, goodwill, underwriting commission. Now, as far as underwriting commission is concerned, you need to understand that underwriting commission, preliminary expense, discount on issue of shares. If such item appear in the balance sheet of vendor company, you are going to debit it to the uh, shareholders account. And then we have stock, datas and cash at bank. Question states further below, on this date, Darwaja Limited is absorbed by Khidki Limited. Correct? Darwaja Limited is being taken over by Khidki Limited and Khidki Kirki Limited agreed to take over all assets and liability except interest due on debenture and to pay the following amount. So out of four liability, only one liability is not taken over. Only one liability is not taken over, which is the liability which is not being taken over. That is interest on debenture is not taken over. Correct? accept interest due on debenture and to pay the following amount. Now, question says that, this is similar to the last question, just pay attention here. For each preference share in Darwaja Limited, rupees 10 in cash and one 9% preference shares of 100 each in Khidki Limited. Could you tell me which party is receiving the payment? For each preference share, that means preference shareholders of vendor company are receiving the payment. Preference shareholder of vendor company are receiving the payment. First of all, you will have to look closely how many preference shares are there. There are 4 lakh divided by 100, 4,000 preference shares. Correct? So, 4,000 preference shares, 4 lakh divided by 100. As per the information which is given to us, for each preference share in Darwaja Limited, rupees 10 in cash. For each, for each, that means these 4,000 shares, for each, divided by 1. Each preference shareholder is receiving rupees 10 in cash. That means 40,000, they are receiving by way of cash. As far as preference shareholders are concerned. And further, it is mentioned in the question, for each preference share in Darwaja Limited rupees 10 in cash and 1-9% preference shares, 1-9% preference shares of rupees 100 in Khidki Limited. It means preference shareholders are receiving not only some payment in cash, but they are also receiving some payment by way of preference share. How much? 
4,000 preference shares are there and each preference shareholder is receiving one 9% preference share of rupees 100 each. So that is equal to 4 lakh. And this payment is being received in the form of preference shares. So preference shareholders are receiving, you can say 4 lakh 40, 40,000 in cash and 4 lakh by way of preference shares. Is it clear to you? Now, next information is related to equity share. How much equity shareholders are receiving? For each, for each, each equity shareholder, Darwaja Limited decides to pay 20 in cash. Now, total number of equity shares are 8 lakh. So, this payment is being received by equity shareholder. There are 8,000 equity shares and each one is receiving rupees 20 in cash. So, 1 lakh 60,000. 1 lakh 60,000 is the payment and this payment is being received in the form of cash by the equity share. And then question says that each equity shareholder is also receiving for each equity share in Darwaja Limited rupees 20 in cash and one and one equity share in Khidki Limited of 100 each but having a market value of 140. That means each shareholder is receiving one equity share but one equity share is of 100 but its market value is 140 so you will consider 140 if you multiply it it will be equal to i think 11 lakh 20 thousand this payment is in the form of equity shares is it clear to you so whatever total payment received by the shareholder that is 40 plus 4 lakh 4 lakh 40 plus 160 plus 11 lakh 20 that will be equal to 17 lakh 20 thousand that will be your purchase consideration is it clear to you so your purchase consideration i have also solved it for you also is 17 lakh 20 thousand i've already told you preference shareholders just pay attention calculation of purchase consideration 4000 shares divided by 1 multiply it with 10 it is equal to 40000 that is in cash similarly 4000 preference share divided by 1 multiply it with 1 and because the each shareholder is getting one preference share of 100 each so total is 4 lakh this payment is being received by way of 9 percent preference share as far as equity shareholders are concerned, each shareholder is receiving rupees 20 in cash, that is 1 lakh 60. And each shareholder is receiving one share, one share, each shareholder is receiving one share, but at, but market price is 140. So 11 lakh 20 worth of equity share they will receive. So that means 17 lakh 20 thousand is our purchase consideration. And we can say this time, out of 17 lakh 20, we are receiving 1 lakh 60 thousand in cash, that is 40 thousand and 160, that is equal to sorry, 2 lakh in cash, and 4 lakh in what we call preference share, and 11 lakh 20 thousand in equity shares. Is it clear to you or not? After having computed the amount of purchase consideration, the rest of the things I think you can manage. Try to attempt this question of your own because if every question I am going to record, if every question I am going to solve, then it will become a bit problem. So you try to do it by yourself, otherwise I will do it for you next time. So shall meet you in the next session, correct? Uh, if you are able to do this question, fine, otherwise I will do it for you because the time limit is coming to an end because we in advance we put up some time limits over there so if i cannot continue even if i wish so so i will have to stop the session here shall meet you in the next one